my city in the light rain at the stoplight watching all the shorties hustle ain't even come of age already flexing muscle i take a hit blow it out time to keep it pushing tears falling from my mother's eyes from the skies in my head i keep thinking what's the next movement when i pursue it's just another form of self-improvement i want more like the things i never had before so we explore every avenue to open doors too many sleeping in the streets without a thing to eat God will never give you more than you can handle And at your lowest point, anoint you for your biggest battle The non-believer asking why he let somebody die Ask the one who pulled the trigger Fire, fire Let me tell you something, let me tell you something Come on. You won't see what's coming, you won't see what's coming, you see what's coming. Play my song and the drop, hit the joint slow Blow that endo, blow that endo, blow that endo, blow Politicians. My click a kill for me, but that's what that good comma get you. Yes. Pussing up the killer, smoke it like it's competition. competition. Keep it real with all my niggas shitting on these bitches. 59 to pile up in the corners, hit the switches. Pistol on my lap, cause where I'm from, I'm still the riches. Money tall as Horace Grant on top of Scotty Pippen. Shot his ass just like a free throw at the Gun Center. I know you watching me, I know you on the bees. You know we rolling deep. Might let you roll a weed. I got your bitch around. It's time to twist a pound. Might let you get your money up to come and sit you down. But that's the game we play when it's a major play. We talking EMs only moving in a major way. I'm talking major league. We moving major weed. Get the money to me, then you gotta wait a week. There's no amount of money washing what you done away. You can't run away. I bought a gun today. Bought it to protect my home. On the news, another family died by the chrome. Sweat dripping down my cheek. I can't even speak. In the haze in my head, but my will is weak. Pick me up, don't leave me hanging. Don't give up on me. I can be the one you need. Sweat dripping down my cheek. I can't even speak. In the haze in my head, feel my will is weak. Pick me up, don't leave me hanging, don't give up on me. I could be the one you need. Let me tell you something, let me tell you something. You won't see what's coming, you won't see what's coming. Play my song and the drop, hit the joint slow. Blow that endo, blow that endo, blow that endo, blow. Bands up, get your hands up, get your bands up. Bad bitch, give me brain, I'm a learner. 
swimmer cause she a squirt of the red bottom from murder these cookies they come from burner sign a check for the proper commas niggas try and find us box wagon and calabasas with adianas and i've never seen a hater at the bank i'm floor seat at the stables ain't i'm cutting through the paint wait risky business so i'm riding with the wop on the mansion cool sliding in my socks can't tell me shit and we don't really party in the club make an order get it shipped and you'll step the plug you ain't gang you ain't cuz you a dub man you ain't gang you ain't cuz you a dub one go get money now you stuntin on em. see me coming down the block now i'm frontin on em. charted on the billboards running on em. put them on the four list come on get your hands up you got your bands up get your hands up you got your bands up get your hands up you got your bands up get your hands up you got your bands up champagne dreams hundred band wishes punkin bitches out like i'm sid vicious got the place lit Hit the bass kick, batter swinging hard for a bass hit. You can talk about us, yeah, we be the loudest. You don't have to say a word, fuck you if you doubt us. How you living though, since you're judging mine. Trying to tell you I'm getting mine all the time. One go get money, now you stuntin' on em. See me coming down the block, now I'm frontin' on Trotting on the billboards, running on em. Put them on the four list, come on, get your hands up. You got your bands up. Get your hands up, you got your bands up. Get your hands up. Got my mind on my money and my money on my mind Never leave it on the table, get it all of the time Got my hand on my weapon and my weapon on my side Never leave it on the table, never leave it behind My view from the rooftop, city lights Continuation of a grind, reaching many heights Kick batter, serve it on a silver platter Scotty playing on the keys, yeah we hit him with another slap Toe tap and see the window rattle like a snake her reaction, keep it poppin' till the back break. Got her swingin' on my chain like a swing set. She gotta slow it down, she ain't seen a thing yet. One go get money, now you stuntin' on em. See me comin' down the block, now I'm frontin' on em. Charted on the billboards, runnin' on em. Put them on the four list, come on, get your hands up. You got your bands up. Get your hands up. You got your bands up. Get your hands up. You got your bands up. Get your hands up. You got your bands up. Oh yes, it's Monday, we made it through another weekend in this crazy place of ours. This is the Dr. Green Thumb podcast, no, correction, the Dr. Green Thumb show. Yeah. Yeah. Newly dubbed from last Friday. We want to thank everybody uh, who joined us last Friday. There was a shitload of motherfuckers that um, popped in and enjoyed the celebration celebratory 420th show with us of uh this here show it's more than a podcast that's why we are now calling it a show yes so um here i am joined by the iconic one eric bobo big drum team icon fucking house eat motherfuckers with the deal happy one day yep outstanding and uh mr goodlight c minus the lit one is here for the business. What up, everyone? Happy Monday. Bring it. Exactly. And on the on the boards and on the camera works, 
We got Bolton, Blombo, and Bra Bra. What's Brack and B? Just bicking it, being boo. <laughs> no other way. No sign. No other way. Yeah, people don't even know. Uh, and joined with us today by surprise to you, motherfuckers, the legendary. <laughs> and I say legendary because this motherfucker is very legendary. This is my brother, my big brother right here. DJ Muggs in the building. What's Ooh. cracking, everybody? Yeah. That's Ooh. right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the black goat yeah. is in the motherfucking house. New York City. That's right. New York. We got Cali Blaze up in here, too. Up, Cali y'all? Blaze. That's Ooh. right. Shooting shots all Happy over the Monday, place. Happy Monday, man. Happy Monday. Welcome back. On the sniper shit. Yeah. Um, like, you know, um, the 420th episode went off wow. um, pretty cool, man. Look, yeah. let me tell you what we did, Muggs. Um, we told these motherfuckers, because we, we held a, 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 um, we did something that, Asked them if they wanted to see a performance. Of course they did. Mm. And we said, okay, if they got to a certain point, right? Like, so um, we said, if you got to a thousand likes before the hour or before the show's over, we would, the following um, show would, or, you know, I think the 420th show, we do a get high performance, right? Which is, you know, the, the get high medley, right? And we did it in suits. We busted out Excalibur oh, yeah. 1. You remember Excalibur oh, yeah. 1 right Excalibur. here in the corner. <laughs> it racked our brains for many times, many years. And then these guys did the mini flips on the Stundins. And uh, it was just one of those crazy, you know. And then closed out by that. Steph Tone and C- minus did a set which was fucking off the hook. Oh, like, thanks, all, man. all in suits. All in suits. All in suits. All in suits. Right. We Sorry. did this all, all this classy. Like gentlemen. Um, and these motherfuckers appreciate it. So we appreciate you for appreciating what we did here. Um, even Cali Blaze, he took a hit yeah. Uh, yeah, of really. the bong three times his size. <laughs> X caliber one. That means I'm like two and a half feet tall. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe. Okay, is it two? One and a half? Yeah, man, that was a little. My uh, math yeah, has never half, been good. Like Anyone could, ever, could tell you that off top. <laughs> Small but mighty, huh? <laughs> yeah, there we fucking go. took that fucking bitch down like nothing, son. Handled it. We handled He's it. We got lungs. I, we all got lungs him. here. We, we trained do. for this. That's right. And we trained for this type of shit right here. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's what we did. And, you know, we appreciate y'all that joined us for that. We got many more milestones to come. So, you know, get ready, goddammit. Yeah. Um, Bobo looked like a pastor, Muggs. He looked like he should have a little Bible next to him. Oh, man. Oh, God. Or a jazz musician. Or, or a, jazz a jazz musician. Yeah, you know, Smokey Jack Club, you know what I mean? There you go. I could have went for that one. With Smokey Jack Club. Yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. You know, with I don't jazz know. cigarettes. Pastor Bobo was looking mighty strong, we son. Got, anybody got a visual I could see? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bo- yeah. Bolton, is, Bolton is the king of visuals. Yeah. Pastor Ooh. Bobo. Yeah, look at yeah. that. Ha! Give me your money. From the church <laughs> of Elevation. Passing the hat around. Yeah. <laughs> you, are, you are now in the church of Elevation. Um, Pass. Um, no change. God. Just dollars in the basket. Uh, yeah. Oh, you can see. You do could it even for be. God. You could even, do it for God. <laughs> for the Lord. For the... <laughs> I see a future. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bobo's. The people of Bobo's Temple. <laughs> yep, no, I could see it. Get, get just don't nice, drink the Kool-Aid. Just don't yeah. drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't. Keep away from the Kool-Aid. Yeah. I need you to... <laughs> <laughs> I need you to back up off the Kool-Aid. Or as Bolton, and I would say, the Boolade. The Boolade. Uh, Pass that. <laughs> fuck the around fluid. That. No, no, there's no such thing. <laughs> Is there, hold them no back. Thing. Hold, hold them back. back now. Give what you can. Training now. these youngsters are hard. Mugs. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh but it's 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 good to be back here on Monday. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. And uh we got mugs with this. You've been working a lot, bro. And we've been nonstop. Yeah. I'm, I'm scared to stop. I might not be able to start again. So you know you know when you work out and you quit? Yeah. And if you try to start working out again, it's harder right. to get back. Yeah. yeah, it's the same thing with making music for me. If I stop too long, I'm like, man, I don't feel like doing this shit. Fuck. Did you ever like take a break or what was the longest break that you took like 
from, a week. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Word. A See, week, we come right? from that same shit. Because yeah, a week yeah. is the most I ever took off. Yeah, like I I know that I've always felt like if I took a vacation, I'm missing a, a opportunity to do this part of the game, mm-hmm. right? So it's mo- it's more work than it is like relax and chill and forget about it. Uh, we come from the same mentality, really. Keep working because you don't know how long it's going to take to get back on. Even when I leave town, man, I do shit. I make, I get up, I make some music, I shoot videos. You know, mm-hmm. like next time you go to Hawaii, you everybody go to Hawaii for two weeks and do the, do the Dr. Green Thumb show in Hawaii. Ooh, right, that's how you yeah. take a vacation because yep. it's all one thing anymore. I don't separate my life from my work anymore. It's just all one big immersed, immersive experience Smart. at this point. You yeah, know what I mean? that's yeah. real shit. That's the way you got to do it. At oh, this yeah. point, right? Keeps it fun because I can't sit on the fucking beach for two days. I'm bored as fuck already. You know right. what I mean? Right, 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 right. Hey, and you've yeah. been like you've been back and forth to Colombia a lot, mm-hmm. right? We've been, I've been we've been there a few times, man. That shit is a, a, a whole different experience. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Colombia's yeah. some whole other thing over there. Yeah, and, and you've been you've been working with a lot of artists down there. Yeah, me and Crime Apple, we um we wanted to make our album like more of a destination experience, so we went down there and recorded the first album in Medellin, mm-hmm. hung out for two weeks, shot all the videos, recorded, rented the studio, so we'd hang out in the daytime, hit the beaches, get some good food, get, have the coffee, and you know, and um at night hit the lab, work, shoot videos in the daytime, check out the different the things the city had to offer and stuff, and then um we wrapped that one up. And then the second one, we went to um, um, Cartagena. Yeah. Went out there, rented a big ass, this old hotel with 12 rooms. Yeah, shit. Sure. Only $1,000 a night with 12 rooms with a full staff. Damn. Three meals a day. Nice. Swimming wow. pool, elevator. So we got that whole um, shit. King recorded shit. in there. Yeah, right on the beach. Um, just recorded, shot videos, and had a good time making records because, you know. Fuck, how many records have we made, bro? They get boring to make yeah. another record, another record, another record, another record in the studio, in the same studio. You know what I mean? Right. I always thought you were onto something when you wanted to go record somewhere else. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like when we when we recorded Black Sunday in New York, I thought that was key. You know what I mean? Like that, because it was a whole different vibe. We didn't have any distractions that, that were happening in L.A., like motherfuckers, you know, showing up to the studio unannounced or, you know... Any of that. The little right. shit like, I don't got to put gas in my car. I don't got to walk the dog. You know, I don't got to put the laundry in the laundry. There's all those little things that are just disappear from your life when you leave. Yeah. Distraction. Yeah. 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 I, I remember you suggesting one time that we, we, we record in Amsterdam, that we take like a couple months and go record down there. We were going to do it, but something, something in the timeline got fucked up and we weren't able to do it. But I thought... That would have been fucking oh, awesome. That would have been the shit. Yeah. That would have been the shit. I used to yeah, see was... how um, Led Zeppelin would go to, you know, Morocco and record. Or yeah, rent, a lot of the rock bands, they you know, do that. Go class. different yeah. places yes. around the world <clears throat> and, and, and incorporate the, the instrumentations from those different cities and those different countries into the, their album right. that year. You know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. to get new, fresh inspiration because, you know, w- 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 when you vibrate at the level of us, you're always looking for new inspiration and you need more input. Right. So, you know, so you know, just just keep searching for that as an artist. You know what I mean? I'm always looking for some new inspiration to just incorporate into what I'm doing. It, it keeps it fresh. It keeps it alive. It's and it, you know, it, it keeps it fun. It's a way to evolve it it too. Yeah. yeah. You know, like evo- when you when you're evolving, you can make it fun mm-hmm. without it seeming like you're you're trying to do something different. Like right. just doing something different. In an organic way, it just comes out. And then you know it when you hear it, you're like, oh, man, this is that shit. And it's different than anything you've done. But sometimes you're you're chasing that shit, and it sounds like it. I don't mean yeah. you. I mean, like, just in general as an artist. Right. Sometimes you chase that shit, and it never really lands the way you might hear it in your head. Yeah, that When exactly. it's organic, it's different because it's like you sort of let it happen as opposed to we're chasing it. You know what I noticed? Like, like I can't even drive the same way to work every day. I go fucking crazy. You know what I mean? I'm so you, in, instead of looking for inspiration <laughs> for outside of myself and keep looking outside, like what are they doing? What are they doing? What are they doing? When I leave and get away from like my everyday life, I can go deeper into myself. You know what I mean? So I just go deeper into me and see what's in there, and then pull mm-hmm. pull, pull from that because all the. I got all the inspiration I need. I didn't heard enough music, seen enough movies, read enough books, and got enough ideas and inspiration for another hundred years. You know what I mean? But it's just 
reconnecting with it and finding it. And oh shit, you know, it's like that lost folder in yeah, your computer right. you forgot about. And it's right here in your fucking brain. And when when it clicks in another time, so you know, just having a trying to have fun, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean. Having fun doing it. Yeah, because that's everything. You gotta still well, enjoy it. You gotta bro. still enjoy it, cause like you can have the skill set, the ability, um, all that, right? But if you ain't got the passion for it and that 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 shit, that competitive mm. thing that's always there, right? Um, or that should be there, then you're just kind of going through the motions, and your skill set can allow you to do some decent work, but it ain't never anything special, right? Right. But it, but if you got that passion for it still, and you're still in the game to like chop the fucking head off of everyone, um. I think it it hits different, and and people feel it like, oh, this shit is like that that business right here, and uh, you know that that's the important part is keeping that part. Like it's not just work; it's mm-hmm. something I fucking love to do. Exactly. And when you're doing this shit for thirty five years, you're gonna have it's a marathon. So you're gonna have slow points and little yeah. valleys and peaks. You know what I mean? So I try to extend the peaks now and just stay on fucking one hundred at all times now. Yeah. So that's why I don't. Take a day off. <laughs> yeah, nah. Understandable. That, yeah, no, I sh- I'm with you right there, man. I remember there was there's two things that that you told me way back in the way back that stuck with me, and and this is why I stay on my shit. Listen to other dope rappers if you want to fucking you know like have a sharp sword. Be around the best. Listen to the best. Don't ever think that you are just the best. AKA, always be a student. Don't ever right. think you're above people. You know, Study. even the worst motherfucker, you got something to learn from. Yeah, you know, don't, be, don't be arrogant. Don't have the hubris. Just be humble. Always be as you're a master, and you become more masterful. Stay the student. That's right. Listen to everything and listen to who really got it, and put your ego aside because that's something we always did with each other you know like when we were analyzing the music like on what was going to make it egos were always put aside that way like you know Mm -hmm. we could be honest with each other like if some of us didn't like something or whatever you know what i mean and that was important putting the fucking ego aside yeah we had an ego coat check at the door at the studio and you had to check it in before you walked through (laughs) the doors but even in the studio, it's creative criticism. It isn't like personal. Right. But it's like an attack, right. you know. And it, it's a hard thing to take, though, because I had great ideas. And be like, I don't know. And I'm like, oh. But, and then after you let you see time, and you're like, oh, shit, they were right. I mean, yeah, I think we all go through that as, as artists. You know what I'm saying? And and the other thing is just, um, fuck. It, when, when you're fucking creating something, right, you got to definitely have that passion. It can't just be going through the fucking motions. And you got to be willing to fight for mm. if you thought something was really cool and shit like that. But you got to be able to explain why you think it should make it's a gotta fucking make sense. Yeah, And it's right. got to make sense. It's got to make sense, and especially when you're working within a, within a group. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like different parts of the machine, you know what I mean? Right. Everybody has to work you know, with their strengths, right. you know what I mean? And, and yeah, that's absolutely. It. And the other thing that you gave me that, that was a, a constant, it still is to this day, is constantly be doing the craft. Know what I mean? Like, con- yeah, like it's got to become second nature in your whole fucking being, the culture of you. It's got to be that. Like the, So it's the, you know, the same thing that, like, you know, if someone's into fitness, right, they may have started to you know get in better shape trim fat and 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 like you know just sort of drop weight or whatever but as they're doing it it you know they they start loving doing it it becomes a culture Mm -hmm. of themselves so now they're not working out just to keep weight off they're working it out because it becomes a part of of you yeah you feeling complete that day without doing it right you know what i'm saying You're, you're maintaining your your temple this way right and it's the same shit with writing songs it's the same shit with performing and being creative the more you do it it becomes second nature you can never get stumped you'll never have like a reason for not having an idea Mm -mm. because you've done it so much and it's like a muscle you know what i mean like someone could say hey c minus go spin a set 
you've done it so much that you don't even need to know what you're playing. Yeah, I could just go do it. That you could just go do it. Yeah. Figure it out as I go. Right. Exactly. It's like, fuck it, all right, right. Oh, we're going to go here. And you just see and the room, and you could just switch just from crowd. looking at people's and, and, body language. And you yes, know sir. why that is? Because you spent hours upon hours upon hours yeah. doing this shit. Absolutely. It's become second nature. And it's the same shit with writing and being an MC and being a well-rounded MC. You got to do all these fucking things constantly. And you could take a small break, you know, if you need to separate from it. But you got to stay doing it. Because yes. the, the more you do it, the better you get at it, and the more second nature it becomes, and it's just a part of you. Yes. And if you ain't got that locked, if you don't master that, your run is short. Yeah, if you don't like, love the journey and the hard work, and you're only focused on the prize at the end, and that's what you want it to be, then good luck. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to love the work. The work is that. the... Yeah, man. My Learning. path is the never-ending tunnel to the light. Yeah, well, you're, a, I, you're a beast, bro. That I could never get to. It's going to always yeah. be right there, and I'm going to always, always be running to oh, it. man. <laughs> it's get, why is it getting further? <laughs> some days it's here, and some days some, it's there. Yeah, yeah. some days fuck. it's right there, and other days it's way the fuck down there. Yeah. But you got to want to get to it. Yep. Yep. Know what I mean? You got to love, love that so and much. And it's the days when it's fucking hard and you don't feel like doing it. But that's, you know, yes. that's, that's the days that counts. It. That's yeah. going to separate yeah, the, man, amongst people. The that's success. real shit. And not the, not, you know, it's easy to make some money. It's easy to have a little, get, hit a little lick, but to keep hitting that lick and keep doing this shit for 30 years, bro, and stay Word. on top of it. Yep. Yeah. Here, here's my, my mentality on that, right, in terms of the, the seed you plant yourself in your subconscious Right, because manifestation is everything. Right, um, you you can always tell yourself that ah, maybe I could do it, but you got to tell yourself you're doing it. Yeah. As soon as you said the, maybe, you lost. Yeah. As soon as yeah. you said <laughs> maybe, you lost. And, and okay. you know what? One thing I believe too is the manifestation is just the first part. The second part's the work. The work. You know, yeah. everybody to wants to yeah. think about it. They want to dream. They want to pray, but they forget. It's the fucking work, yeah. Yeah. you know. The manifestation is important with the work. You do yeah. those two. Yeah, you got to put both in. You right. need the mental and the sp yeah, you need the man. spiritual, the mental and the physical. The physical behind is it. put in that work, yes. yo. Then you got to return the phone calls. You got to right. show up to the right That's places. Right. You got to be on time. You got to be a gentleman. And accountability, one hundred percent. And you got to work when you don't want to work. You know, yes. like that. So many times I go. And That's when it's work. Going, That's yeah. when it's work. Yeah. You know, and I yeah. love what I do, but there's times when I'm like, fuck, man, I want to be home with my family. But you know what? But we got. I got to do what I got to do to get you, there. But you know what it is? Is because you love what you do yes, so much I that do. you'll put in the extra work, even though it might be a pain in the ass That's that right. day. Yes. Yes. Right. Love it. Yeah. yes. Because you love it. Yeah. Because if you didn't love it, you would just let it be like, eh, Because in whatever. the same way, even though we yeah. do something different, we have the same focus, we want to give our customers and our fans but, what they love. But I'll tell so you what. making that is, is absolutely you know, it's beautiful. But the, the, the whole premise to the points were consistency. Mm. You know, being around the influences that can help you be, like, they're inspirations to you as yeah. opposed to influences. They're more inspirational pieces that make you want to do it, to yeah. make you love it more. And then the work you put in, in terms of being consistent and yes. constantly I, doing it and being present and yes. being accountable. And stay in a student. Just keep learning. Keep right. watching, keep learning, right. keep watching, yeah. keep learning. Yes. Yeah. Hey, man. That's, I think that's why we're all still so fucking sharp to, to this right. day Absolutely. because we've had this mentality since day one. Yes, right. stay inspired. We and were learning working. it and carving it out at the same time. Yeah. There you go. This is yeah. what you do. I yeah. mean, listen, I'll tell you what. We don't get a, f a, a lot of credit for a lot of shit we pioneered. We get credit for what we get credit for as mm -hmm. Cypress Hill. There's no doubt about that. I cannot say that in certain places we haven't gotten our flowers, right, as they say now these days, right? But there's other shit that we brought into the game that no one even really fucking really knows about or talks about and all that stuff. And, you know, we're not the type motherfuckers to go brag about it if you know you know if you don't you don't and right we know yeah yeah um but there's a whole lot of a whole lot of our imprint on the game today right now yeah i mean listen the music obviously but how about the connection of cannabis and music i mean it was one of the most powerful 
uh, influential movemental cannabis movements in the 90s through hip hop. So it was one of the most original and and it had an impact. You know, like your shit had an impact. Well, musically, yes. No, for sure. No, no, no. The message. No, though, the message, too, you know? the culture, and the music, yes. But there's there's other stuff that we contributed to the game. Oh, fuck yeah. For sure. That That is. Okay. It's not necessarily, I mean, it's it's a part of music, but not necessarily music-based. But there's shit there that we influenced in the culture. And, uh, you know, that that was just because we were so goddamn relentless in being ourselves just, that it became something. Just doing it and not thinking about what it was going to be like 30 or so years from now. It was like what what we was living what we were doing, yeah. what we were involved with, and yeah. who we were, who we were, you know, who yeah. we were at that time. Yeah, true that. Right. You know what I mean? Would, would you guys ever get like bounce back from the label as you guys were going, like from the first album into like uh, Temples of Boom? Like, were you like as you guys were going darker? Were you guys getting feedback, like feedback? Like, Kinda. Like at maybe least you it, shouldn't go here, or just like well, all right, keep going. Not necessarily that. Maybe you shouldn't go here. I was like, uh, you know, how long could they talk about this, you know, the street shit? Uh, you know, this or or this, this, you know, we were a very dark mentality type group in terms of the type of shit we put out, right? So right. we were getting darker as we went along. Yes. <laughs> and they didn't, they didn't trip off that part, but they let us do us. That's dope. But, you know, there was all, there was always like, yo, you know, can't we make something more upbeat, more radio marketing friendly? And, you know, we were always constantly, mm, not so much. Yeah. We're doing us. And whatever you get out of it is what you get out of it, right? I mean. Absolutely. Absolutely. If we, you, we came into the game aggressive. Yeah. Like we, all of us, we had two middle fingers up, you know what I mean? And. We were had a fucking nine millimeter. And we was driving two hundred fifty miles an hour on this freeway. Like it was no fucking taking no prisoners, man. And then once we had success on the first record, they listened to everything we wanted to do. That's, it was just, that was the crazy shit. That's cool. They didn't try to mold us into what we weren't. They were like, let's just let these guys do them. Cause you had your own sound. And when we first walked in, when we first walked into, the, we was like, we don't want to be seen. We don't ever want to be on a picture. And all the ads they did, we wasn't in none of the ads. It was just dark and it was shadowy and it was with it. We had a really good um, phrases product manager yeah. named Karen Mason that was amazing. Yep. She always did. And we had Gerard Babbitts, and they always made sure they kept this mystique. They kind of understood us. They let us do our thing. That's um, right, Angela Thomas. <clears throat> yep. And they, you know, we just did our thing. I never wanted to be seen. I was like, let's not be seen. Because it's more to the, the mystique. Willie yeah. Wonka type shit. Oh, I, yeah. I remember reading Run DMC interviews. And once I read after like the third album, it was like the, the, the same questions and the same answers. I got bored. Right. And I was like, what's next? And then I remember Led Zeppelin where you would hear all these folklores. And these, these, these you, they told you this, the album cover meant this when you seen the hermit on the album cover. Mm -hmm. yeah. You moved into fucking Aleister Crawley's sh mansion on, on the Loch Ness. You know, on the, mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa whether the shit was true or not, but your imagination goes crazy when you just don't put the picture in front of people. Right. So I was like, let's keep, let's keep the, the, the imagination going for everybody with Cypress forever. Yeah. It, you know, and I think because we had these ideas, it made it easy for them as opposed to them trying to, you know, having to mold us into something because some artists come in the game with just the music. They don't have the other ideas, mm -hmm. at least at that time. And then they're smiling on the cover with the Fila suit, and in two years the cover looks played. It looks dated. Exactly. You know what right. I mean? But our records dated. never look dated. Exactly. We never dated ourselves with, with times or, or, like, style or fucking certain slang words because even b <clears throat> used to make up his own slang. And I used to always mm -hmm. think a group back then, you needed to be different. Mm -hmm. Everybody needed their own musical sound, or you was whack and you was a biter. You needed your own, your own fucking slang as a lyricist. You needed your own style. You needed your own visual sound. You needed to dress different than everybody, or you was a biter and you was whack. And we and, knew it. And we, and you know what's crazy is and we that wasn't gonna be whack. We utilized all that, and and they didn't have to do anything but really put our shit out, support it, and make connect the dots in terms of you know having us do shit here, there, and in and, and that, right? Mm -hmm. and, and on our end, all we had to do was show up and do our shit. They never, a lot of labels, they didn't didn't really give artists like that kind of uh, power like that. Fuck like no. That, right? Hey, man, I, to, to Sony's credit, 
they would allow us to go in one of the fucking meeting rooms and blow it out just like we're doing right here. 1991. In the corp, yeah. in the Sony That's corporate, sick. and they would all laugh, and they would think it was cute because they smoked at home and didn't tell nobody, and it was like oh. the fifty sixth <laughs> floor. You know what I mean? The fifty sixth floor. I remember. I remember. We would fucking there. go for meetings up there, like to, you know, cause Cypress Hills here. Got to have strategy <laughs> meetings, right, for the next single or whatever. Wow. Boom! They're like, all right, put Cypress in the fucking meeting room, and me and Mugs would proceed to roll some weed up. And blow it the fuck out. They loved when we were there. Right? <laughs> yeah, they did. They pretty much said we love when you guys come in the yeah. building. That was the only That's thing dope. they didn't have in the graphic novel. They should have worked that in there right. somewhere. Then oh, we came guys... up in the Sony building and blew it up. On Ooh. on the regular, we did this. Donnie Einer had our backs to, you know, the fullest. That's yep. dope. Yep. The yeah, Don right. had us fucking covered. Like, put him in the fucking 55th floor. And you know, floor. one thing about the music business, then there was visionaries in the music business. Even Donnie was like, you know, 55-year-old Italian guy from fucking wherever he was from. But he was like, fucking, this is it right here. Like, he had vision. And the so Jimmy Iveens had vision, you know what yeah. I mean? And all the old school music people had vision. And um, the Clive Davises. And as the years went on, I started noticing they didn't have vision no more. They was looking to see what's hot. And it was like, oh, that's hot. Let's do this. Let's do this. And there started being a lot of A and R's with their credit cards that was too busy about what they was wearing and wanted yeah. to have dinner. And like I'd seen a lot of the visionaries be gone as our, as as we was going on by our fifth album. They was pretty much out of the label, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I mean the new visionaries at that point were Dre, you, Pete Rock, Premier, um, and guys in that era. Word. But I think for us, like at the label, from from my recollection, it started being a little bit of a battle because everybody was like, "Oh, you know, you're on your fifth album and you're still successful," but they're on to like Maxwell, yeah, and like this other thing. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember and it was this that whole little move. And at Def Jam had left, and Rough House had left Columbia Records. So the thing that really helped us was Def Jam was there, and Rough House was there. When they were gone, it was just us with this. Yeah, whatever, we had whatever they was into that week, and exactly. we wasn't the trendy motherfuckers, but we was. Going we, platinum every album. We were the juggernauts uh, over go. there, man. And when then, when Def Jam left, we were the juggernauts over there on Sony. Nobody wanted to work. And when we would go to the urban department, they was like, no, Cypress is alternative. So we'd go on the elevator to the next floor, and they was like, no, you guys are urban. They didn't know what to do well, with this know, after. Yeah. We're everything. Yeah. We're, we're, we, we, now we, we, we got bigger than just urban or alternative. We became our own entity in, a, in our own thing within this thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's crazy when you outgrow your label and they don't know what the fuck to do with you. It did, that's the thing. They didn't know what they to do. They want to put you in a little section on the shelf and label mm -hmm. you this so they can try to understand uh, you. Im imagine if at that time when they were having this this problem on, on when you have a multifaceted group like that, right? She was about to take a hit. Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought so too. That's I why like, C-minus yeah. was looking at him like, oh, man, are you gentlemen. fucking crazy? Yeah. Let's go. I looked at him um, like, no yo, Blaze. No, no way. I I'll say this. <laughs> Imagine, though, like when a label comes to that point and, you know, you have the technology at your fingertips like today. Like if we would have had what we, you know, what's going on today back then. <sighs> Bro, come on. When they couldn't figure it out, we would have had that shit on lock. These artists got it so easy right now. With so them. easy. Hey, I, man. I see all these underground motherfuckers. All they got to do is go on Instagram. Right and that's mm -hmm. all they do. They and, they say, the right and they go to the studio and they go on Instagram and shoot a video. I'm working hard. I'm like, you working hard? <laughs> Did you get up and go to the fucking morning show? Word. And then go to the fucking, the one stop? Right. And then perform at a breakfast with 16 people looking at you you know what i mean oh and then go God. do the in-store yeah. and then go to the lunchtime radio station and then go do the other in-store then go eat and then do the show in front of 23 people mm -hmm. and then do that on loop for like three months in a row you know what yeah, I mean? exactly. like, that's working hard. hard you had to go city to city fan to fan to build this shit up this shit didn't happen hard. overnight man but you know yeah. that's that's the whole thing about this new shit right you have all these platforms that you can actually cut to that ASAP, like like right if you build if oh, you build a, if you yeah. build a robust base here on YouTube and 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 Instagram and TikTok and and all those relevant types of platforms, right? Or all these relevant type platforms, you could fucking crack one out without radio support, without a fucking without a goddamn label, all that shit, Absolutely. man. It's made it that easy. If you got one, even if it's just one, if it's one, you good. 
and you yeah. could build a base yeah. on that. And you know, it was known for a minute that 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 some of the labels were signing new artists based on on the following they had on IG and YouTube. Yeah. yeah, they got the yeah. hype. Big time. Yeah. They don't no, got to develop artists they, no more. Yeah, they, they don't do got to develop anything. It's, it's yeah. already there. They built it. So you just sign in and put the machine behind this thing that they built and try to. Poof. It's oh, a yeah. plug in to their base, and yes. then they figure anything else after that is cream. <coughs> Dude, easy right? Money. And, and and that's that's what you're dealing with right now. Sometimes, the labels don't even got to work as hard as they used to. Work, yeah, bro. I've heard that they ask for it, and if they're doing projects now, that they ask for the record mix and mastered. Like they're at, they are not even willing to say like I heard before like they'd be like oh you know they try to match bands up right let's get this person to mix this record or let's get do this now they're like if you hand come to a finished in, yeah. yeah there's no development important. deals no more exactly hey, nah, that they was all in you. development that was all in development hey that's yeah. what that's what we did with Psycho Realm we fucking had the record done before I even put it in Sony's hands I spent my money at first to 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 get the initial demo. Yeah, yeah, the initial recordings of it, and I got it to the certain point before, what the last few songs and 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 um, and uh, mastering, and uh, I found it easier. You cut through all the red tape, you fucking get it how you want it, and then boom, here it is. Right. And then, right. You come to the fucking party finished. You don't want their input. You don't want it. Right. Leave, leave it there. Like, I had one A&R come on our first album, and I was just playing the track down. I didn't put the bass on it of the 808s, and he was like, yo, you need to add some 808s to this. And I was like, you need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it, bro. I've never had another A&R come to the studio. And I Word. love that guy. His, that was Kurt Woodley, Kurt and Woodley, I really yeah. like Kurt Woodley. I was he was there. smart, but I was like, yo, come on, man. I was yeah. there. I let, saw it. Let us do I our seen shit. It. It's one of the most ice-cold stories I could Ooh. ever know. Because right. it, was, it was, like, honest, like, and, and to the point, real quick. Yeah. You need to leave. Because, you know, you start painting. You know when you start painting a picture and it looks like nothing? And just yeah. putting backgrounds on And he's like, you need to do this. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> you need Who to go take you? all those great ideas you have and make your own album. Word. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I've... I've, 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 I've so I smoke my yeah. weed and, yeah. and let, me, let me smoke my weed and just fucking twiddle along over here. My, I've been my there. Pace. I've been there. When, listen, you've been there. You've seen it. <laughs> when somebody has said to Muggs, said... You know what? Yeah, you man, you should do this, and you should put this on this song, <laughs> and then I say, yeah, you know, that's a great idea. Would you save that for your album? <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> you know like really. <laughs> hey, man, truth, cold blooded though, but but, but, real. but realistically, had he broke down and and let them influence what he was trying to do, we would never have got to the place where we, you know, well, I'm good. we Thank where you. we got to, because. He, he got to cultivate it the way he heard it without any of these motherfuckers coming at him like because they you know he drew that line right then oh believe me when there's really good advice and somebody has a good point well, listen. i listen like a course, motherfucker i'm like right. wow and when somebody's smart i'm kind of get blown away then right. i start listening to them even more yeah. right but when you come along with the dun 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 you start shit. spitting some shit because you you feel comfortable all of a sudden you had them four <laughs> drinks and you smoking and you just want to start spitting like Fuck out of here. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and plus, you know, you were still like working on layers of the song. It wasn't like, you know, he didn't he didn't realize that you had shit going. You had just you just hadn't got to well, it. Well if yet. I turned it in and it sounded like a, a little fucking home radio with no bass in it, I'd be like, Come on, bro, oh. you need to add some bass. I'd be like, Oh, you think you're right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're right. But you know, he was there on the inception of the song and he was putting an input he didn't have to fucking put no. in. Because, I mean, up to that point, he had been fucking doing everything anyway. Like, why would you question that? Now, when I look back, he just wanted to be useful. And he, yeah. was, he was in the mood. He was feeling part of the team. You know what I mean? And we wasn't we wasn't team players. We was like, this is us <laughs> against the world. You, you, you know wanted, what I mean? It was know, like, if you wasn't down with us, fuck you. It was beef. True that. Right, hey, and, and the thing is, is that, you know, I think every hip hop group had that thing. Like, no, nah, we're doing this shit ourselves. Don't come fuck. Don't. Uh-uh. You ain't touching this shit. This is us. Right. You know, everybody in that time was sort of standoffish with their labels, you know, in the golden era of hip hop. Right. There's some who let the the, 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 art, the the labels mold them. But most of the ones that you still hear and you'd be like, yo, that album was this. That's them doing them just like us. Mm -hmm. It was us doing us. That We were allowed to, to, to be us and yeah. do us. The sound was too, to me, in my opinion, the sound was just too different. 
and too new for some A and R person to to try to put in their ideas for something that they didn't know about because right. they hadn't heard it. They didn't know it. They didn't. They didn't hear it. it came too new. You know the problem you know? is is that you know sometimes you know too much in the moment, right? When you're an A and R of a major label and you add Def Jam on deck and here you are with a brand new artist and you've been in sessions, you know, with other artists and you're trying to give that input. It's it's not in a malicious way that they're trying to give you this this input that they have. It's their experience. And when you're dealing with young artists, motherfuckers, we're standoffish. It's like, yo, we know what the fuck we're doing. Step the fuck Absolutely. off. Absolutely. You know, like for me, like my first group, well, we was a group before I got into the first group that kind of introduced us to the music business was 7A3 and... They told us what our album cover, where we were going to shoot it. They told us what to wear, but I didn't listen to them. Everybody wore Adidas but me. And I was like, I ain't yep. wearing Adidas. And Glenn Friedman was taking the pictures, which he's a famous, famous photographer, right? And he yep. was like, well, Russell Simmons wears Adidas. I don't give a fuck about Russell Word. Simmons. I ain't wearing Adidas. And we shot the pictures on Venice Beach. I never, seen what the, I never seen the video treatments. I just showed up to the videos, and that's what the videos were. When I did the album, I had I didn't produce, I didn't have a drum machine yet, so I had all these ideas, and I showed up to the studio, and they produced my ideas, and I didn't like the way they came out. And Instead I got, of I got, letting you do it yourself. I, you know, I was a kid. I was 18. I really didn't know my way around the studio, but I had ideas, and they produced my ideas, which was cool. I learned. Yeah. I got a, I got like a, this four-year college education in 30 days making a record, which I brought okay. back to the hill. But I got fucking mad when the record was done. I go, this shit's whack. This ain't how right. I don't want my shit to sound. My shit ain't supposed to sound like this. And I just saved up my chippies to get a drum machine. And they were about $3,000 back then for a drum machine. Yeah. You know, motherfucking 1989, 1990. Like, yeah. And I was like, I'm going to do This is how our shit needs to be. You know what I mean? And I made whack beats for about a year. We made some demos that were, oh, eh. Kind of, and then one day, me and him was just every day making demos. Whenever we got for a whole year. And one day it was like, bam. And after that first song, every song was dope. There wasn't a whack song for like. It was that one day. That, that one day, then boom. every song we did was on the fucking album. Yeah. Then every we song didn't waste we did was songs. on the second album. We didn't song, fucking waste wow. songs for nothing. We did a little extra songs on the third album, but for the first, those first two, it was just whoo, it was right. nonsense. Everything just got dope. We hit, we hit that vein, like, like the vein in the gold mine, and it was just on from there. Word up. Is that when like? Because you were DJing, right? And you had that passion for DJing. When was the passion for beat making that just kind of overtook that? Or what, you know what I mean? Not overtook it, but you know what I'm saying. Like, you went more into beat. Yeah. I was in, it was funny because I was in New York and um, Sam Sever used to tell me, you need to make beats. And I was like, nah, fuck that. I want to DJ. And then mm -hmm. once I won the West Coast Championship. Yeah. And my roommate was Aladdin, and then he won the East Coast Championship, and then he won the U.S. Championship, and he went to Europe, and he lost, he came second. But I seen what they gave. They sold this fucking arena out. There was 100,000 people, and they gave the winner some gold, fucking fake gold-plated turntables, and that was it, like $1,000. All that work you put and in for it. Th there was 100,000 people. They sold all these videos. They made probably half a million dollars off of all of our talent, and then he got some gold plated turntables, and I was like, all right, I took this DJ shit as far as I want to take it now. This is cool. I want to make these records now. But it was the experience of making the album with 7A3 where it wasn't what I wanted our shit to be like. Because, you know, it was like, this ain't me. Right. This ain't what we're about. This ain't yeah. what we represent. This ain't what we listen to, what inspires us. So that shit got me mad as fuck. And then we just, we went next. that's what got me to really start going super hard on this shit. There it is, Beats. That's the one you're talking about right there. Yep. Goes like I this. just learned about it, too, in your voice in the novel, so. Oh, we're oh yeah, we was talking <laughs> about 783. But that was like, you know, we didn't know nobody in the music business back then. Yeah. It wasn't like you could just make a record or go on YouTube and figure no, the shit out and make it. Like I didn't know shit. I walked into the first studio I walked into, I go, I want to make a record. They go, where's your equipment? I didn't know you had to bring equipment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you thought, know, like I thought no... it was there, bro. <laughs> hey, really for hip hop, there was talk. truly no school on how to do it. Right. Wow. Now people know, but yeah, we had to go. Time. We had to go to the clubs. We yeah. was yeah, in skate. We, 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 would, we would go to Skateland USA back to see Public Enemy, and there's like fucking, Salt fucking and pepper AKs fucking in the in the door with two thousand motherfuckers all in red. You know, 1989, 1988. You know what I mean? Hitting fucking world on wheels, going to the show. I would watch DJs to learn. I would just go watch and be like, oh, that's how you learn. Okay, that's how you do that shit. Then you'd go home and try to like figure it out from just watching that shit for like a 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. 
Man, those were the fucking crazy days. Crazy. Word up. I want to take this time to salute our sponsor, CBD Lion, king of the motherfucking jungle with CBDs. If you get down with CBDs, go to CBDLion.com and check the menu. It's pretty big. They got what you need for CBDs. If you got friends, relatives, all that. Um, gummies, edibles, CBD tinctures, topicals, hemp flower, broad spectrum capsules, CBD isolate products, broad and full spectrum products, CBD bundles, combo packs, pet tinctures, and treats. They got it all for you and your pet. Um, and if you like bathing, they got the bath bombs that are bananas. Banging B. Banana bath bombs. You know what I'm saying? They still sold out? Bong. Yeah, well, uh, they're apparently the they're still shit. sold out. Because motherfuckers are buying them. Uh, go to CBDLion.com. Use coupon code BREAL on your purchase and uh, get a discount. CBD Lion. <laughs> That's right, goddammit. And yep. you're sitting here with the icon, Eric Big Drum Bobo. Eat motherfuckers. Big Drum. Um, Mr. Goodlight, C minus. Yo. What up? My man, the legend. DJ Muggs, the black goat. Damn. DJ Muggs. Concentrate Smoke. King, Cali Blaze. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm a sniper, man. You Don't sure ever. Fuck off, man. <laughs> they asked me, wait, Muggs, why are you the black goat? Fucking, because I was the first in line this time. If somebody else would have picked the black goat, I'd have been the pink goat or the blue goat or the green goat or the orange goat. So I, I, I was. I, I got to the party first. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel you on that. Remember Reservoir Dogs? Yeah. Like, why are you there? Why, why am I Mr. Pink? Somebody's already Mr. Black. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, we got Queens on that side, right? Yeah. You got that right. You Queens. too, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, I was you born there. Right? I was born there. Still Hollis. born there. Hey, Hollis. Right. That's Hollis Queens. Me. My favorite part of the documentary was your part. I she was amazing, bro. Shit, man. I love that part. It was yeah, Bubble had some good shit in there. I can't shit. wait. shit. No, yeah, I think so this dope. shit is gonna be beautiful, man. It's good. It's so I was, good. I was kind of like, they got, you know, they, I was like, yo, fuck, we did all that shit. Yeah, I it's, forgot. It's Devon did his thing on that, man. As always. Um, I was, I was like, I didn't know what was coming back, you know, on the first cut, but he did an excellent job. Hell yeah. Salute to my man. And, right I, and our boy Peter, who's the, who's the, the the executive producer, worked on the Wu Tang one too, so he knows how to. Oh yeah. Tell a story. True yeah. I put a story because I was like, "How'd you? Fuck, that's a lot of shit to go through the footage and the interviews and try to put a timeline together." And the timeline was great. Was the way that it went, it was it was really yeah, it was really dope, man. I must agree. Yeah, we just letting y'all know that um, April twentieth, the Cypress Hill documentary is coming on Showtime. Oh, so yes, that, that, that's what we're talking about. Yo, yeah, it's hard. Woo! It's a hard day, man. On four twenty, a hard day. So you see, you know, there it is. That's exclusive. That's, April 20, baby. 420. That's, that's exclusive right there. We let the black goat drop that on you just to let you know. So word up. Word. Four twenty. That's right. There might even be some new music attached to oh. that shit. Oh, oh shit. shit. That's right, man. You never know, man. It might just slap you in the face one more again. Oh, real quick. We don't mind doing things like this. <laughs> oh man! Hey, um, not for nothing, but the performance in the suits were pretty cool. Yeah, background, everything was dope. Yeah, yeah that was, was fun. Pretty, pretty ice cold. Yeah, the congas out. He see, he's using this thing called the hand sonic, right? And um, <laughs> <laughs> replicates the congas. Oh yeah, what else does it replicate? <laughs> <laughs> there you go, like that. <laughs> There he goes. Man, like, I could do it. I could give do us the sound. Give, oh, us, yeah. give us the sound, son. I could do it. GTM, baby. GTM, right GTM. there. GTM, that's right. Oh, that's tight. One with the weed beans branded on the arm. Come on, believe me. Look who it is. Monkey Bill, smoking assassin, Cypress Hill. Yeah. The AC just resonated over my brain, just saturated. Gotta get the cushion. Cold it sounds real. Give it to the right. ones who love to hate it. Lungs get filled like Hershey Hot Wings. Oh, and go, boy, go on. Man, I got everything on there. Kong on there. There it is. I got a fucking. It's for selected everything. shows, right? 
Yeah. Not this. Not on Cypress stage. No, 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 hell, no, no, no. no. He's, it, it, it's on the side. So you don't got to bring things. all these things when you do little things like like of this nature. You don't got to set up. Right, right. Every shit and set you up. You will never. Don't worry. Okay. You're not gonna just see you. Just <laughs> well, you know, that would be crazy. crazy. No, no, no. Mugs will you come can, out. I, been, I thought you was gonna go tech on us no, real quick no, and just have no, one no, piece. No, no, like, no, I don't no, need no. all that shit no more. I got that. I got the master app. I created the Bobo app. I've stripped it all down, Mugs. That's what I'm gonna look over. I'm gonna uh, see mugs on the side of the stage, like, uh, no, come on, man. Yeah, I wanna see the, 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 the real shit. One. We got that. We got that. No, we no, ain't losing the, that. He's got a new app on his cell phone. <laughs> he's, he's using the app on his cell phone for that part. So I just sit down and watch myself play. <laughs> real quick. Ah. Yeah, he came out like kind of unimpressed, like, uh, that's that's it. Huh? No, but that shit is that, that that shit is dope because it you you could put any fucking drum sound in it. I got I got some shit on there. Be real's tied games tight. Yeah. See, mine is what happened. Hey. <laughs> that's Blues Brothers. That's Blues Brothers. <laughs> that's Blues Brothers. He just did Belushi. He did chicken a and coke. <laughs> <laughs> I got lucky doing that tie. Let me tell you that I'm not a tie king, yeah. man. Did your girl help you? No, I For did real? it myself. Yeah. Did you put YouTube, YouTube? on? I probably yeah. did. Yeah. <laughs> I probably did. Cause I suck, bro. I get the, the little YouTube. clip on real quick. You know what's crazy <laughs> is is I got taught how to make a tie a lot. You know, when I was a kid, yeah. and I, you know, if you don't do that shit a lot, you're gonna f pretty much forget. So I flipped it on YouTube and I, you know, got back into okay. This is how you it's a do it. Refresher, real quick. Yeah, YouTube's amazing. Sometimes yeah. I get it really, it really good, is. and sometimes I don't. Sort of like Aton's joints. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. soft six. <laughs> sometimes I'm tying ten. Sometimes they're six. Is mine. Sometimes. Sometimes. Oh man. Happy to be smoking this insane OG again. That's what Tim needs. Oh. Oof. Yes. Taste yes. motherfucker. Yeah, we smoked some a couple Black. of shows back and it put everybody on, Oof. you know, real chill status. <laughs> and it is. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Because the shit is fucking heavy, man. It is. heavy, dying. Can't you roll me uh, like this fire joint that I'm barely fi fucking finishing? Dude. Oh, that's the yeah. jealousy you're smoking. You're so jealous. That mm. shit right here. Yeah. 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 Fucking hey, man. Where are we at right now? Okay, we still got a few minutes. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yes. Fucking hey, man. Hey, listen, if you haven't taken the time to smash the like, do that now. Here's how it goes. Smash that thumb, do then it. the subscribe, and then the fucking bell. And share this bitch out. That's right. Share it out. Share it out. Share it out. Um, let your friends know. Don't be Bogartian this show like Bobo Bogart's Cali Blazes Conscious I Trace. I know Bogart, man. Come yes, on. you do, wow. man. No, I don't, it's man. a proven Only fact. On tour. It's a proven fact. I hard. shared with you at the last day. So we what? Seen it was a, so <laughs> what? So what? So what? So what? It happened. So what? So it happened. It's not my fault. So it's what? How it happens? It's not my fault. Nobody else oh, does does what I do. You know what I mean? But I share it with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. You know what I mean? If that's what you're telling yourself I'll that night, Humphrey you. Bobo. I share with you. Man. It's Humphrey Bobo. 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 There Come is on. Bobo. Stop. Stop. Stop that. Humphrey yeah, Bobo. That. It ain't Humphrey me. Humphrey Bobo. You know what I'm saying? It's not me. Yeah, you the first. Yeah, hey, man, Shane. I'm telling you, you need to make a band like fucking Ricky Ricardo. Like, you need Desi yeah, right. Arnaz. You need a band, bro. Latin or, band. So we got some shit to go like to. Like Willie Bobo. Yeah. I got to do it. Yeah. You have been, You know what? Muggsy, you've been saying this. Since day one. Since day one. And yeah. Come on, I'll play side percussion, dog. Then I could wear. Give me a reason to wear a suit and go out and have some dinner and dance. Oh, oh, I'll get a little shit on. Don't okay. make me rap. I'll play the other percussions, dog. <laughs> yes. Don't we make do, me rap. <laughs> I think we should do hits from the bongos too. We do all of our songs with just percussion. Yeah, hits from the bongos, See? like a, like an acoustic set, but just you redoing your favorite Cypress songs. Do an album, hits from the bongos. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh shit! So yeah, the ideas are flowing. That's right. I, I, I'm a, I bring my shit down to it. the studio, man. We can build on that. Shh, oh yeah. Shit, whenever you're ready. We could definitely right, do here that. Here it is. Ooh, oh, we yeah. working. Come reflip the vocals. I'll do it. We are fucking working right here. Oh, I'm shit. serious. Get man. a refresh. Ooh wee. You know what I'm this is what it's like. Uh, it's like unplugged. I actually know mm -hmm. the song better now than when I wrote it, so I could. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was the funny shit, dog. You know, like sometimes I just dry write that shit right there and then just spit it and spit it right there. There was I didn't go away for a week and come. I, what you got is what you got. But you know what the the crazy shit was is that we ain't going out like that. That's always the trippiest one because realistically, that one we did know. Right, we did spend time with that, but we took mushrooms before we laid it. There you go. Yeah, that's always yeah. like that. You know, yeah. when they ask me about studio stories, it's like the day we did in Saint. Uh, no. We ain't going out like that. We all took. We, murdered we all took like mushrooms, and yeah. then me and Sam flipped the vocals on the mushrooms, and then I remember after we laid that, we listened to the whole album, like front to back on the mushrooms with yeah. the lights out and the only lights on in the studio was the board the board lights that's dope yeah that was the crazy you, you couldn't write tracks. a b-roll couldn't write a bad song those days if he tried he could just be pointing at the target with the gun and go and just hit bullseyes yeah. well thank you sir. fucked up i was like damn everything's on the road sick as fuck. The, the last song on that album was lick a shot right Ooh. am i am i right on that I don't remember. I believe we did Lick a Shot in Philly. We did it in Philly. You know what I'm saying? We now? would always add a couple more songs. Joe would be like, I think y'all need two more songs. Every That was his thing. Maybe one more. And I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Adding Lick a Shot. We ain't going out and Lick a Shot complimented each other in such oh, yeah. a way that it just added to that sound. Like, those were the, the one that the, the, it's like if you had a combo punch you know, type shit on fucking Street Fighter. Like, you had a cheat code. Yeah. That's the number that one cheat code. Because when we were doing those two songs in concert, wherever, they would always stir up the crowds. Like, to this day, both those songs stir those up the fucking crowd. Yeah, man. Liquor yeah, Shot's yeah, one yeah. of my favorite yeah, songs we ever, we ever did. Me too. To be honest. That's, like, one of my favorites. We ain't going out up there too, and, and we ain't going out That's up there too. Those two songs, I mean, like we've done many that are fucking dear to me, but like those, those ones right there, I've seen how they drive crowds. It's yeah. like cowboys fucking wrangling cattle, son. Word. It yes. just creates this guys watching this Yellow movement. A lot. <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah, I'm about to dive in. Yeah. I've been hearing about that shit Bro, from like mad one, different man. circles that ain't even supposed to be watching that shit. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, you too. <laughs> Me too. Then the first thing I when I walked in, he was like, "You see Yellowstone?" I was like, "Oh, here we go yeah. again." Here we go. So, so I'm gonna watch that. Then the, the 1800 one. So have you watched that one yet? Well, no, not yet. Not yet. I'm not done with the regular one. We're I going. Can't wait. I'm I'm going there next. I'm well, here, so I, I was gonna ask to do like the 1800 one first or Yellowstone, or it doesn't matter. I mean, you could. Yeah, right. Ooh, that's an matter. interesting way to think about I, that. You know, like, yeah. just already if, started. So, so it, like. If I had started late, I probably would have watched it. The, I would have watched the prequel first, and then went to get into the, the backstory. To get the backstory. So if you watch Game of Thrones, and then the prequel came out, which is coming out, one of them right now, right? right about the, and then you, within two years from now, what would you want to w have watched first? The prequel. See, I yeah. would rather watch the second one. And then get the back. Go back. You, you know is what that, it is? Is, is that yeah. only because you did what, that first? No, because I would just want to see what made them that after. I want to see what the, what they become, and then show me how they became that. You way. know what's crazy you is know? that I mean, you know, the, the, obviously the Star Wars franchise yeah. have done yeah, this and shit did. like that, right. and the backstory is yeah. everything. It's just how you tell the backstory, right? And that eighteen eighty three shit is the backstory. So. You know, in in this day and age, you could see the backstory first if you just wait. Like if you wait and you don't watch any episodes and wait for whatever season to finish, finish, then you could binge watch the whole shit from start of the fucking <laughs> just backstory. Let, the whole, story. let it happen and watch yeah. it one day. Let it happen and watch it however yeah, long it takes time, you yeah. to watch it. Because I only saw like the first season of Game of Thrones, to be honest. I never got into it. I couldn't do that. I one. never. It's good. You yeah, gotta I've let heard. it. You gotta I let heard. it pan out. The I'll books are pretty good. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Everybody you just gotta let it pan out. It. Everybody's, I just the end. No one it. loved, oh, no. right? The end. Bad no ending. one loved on 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 the last the series finale because realistically it wasn't what dude wrote. Like HBO wanted to close out the series because they didn't know when he was gonna close it out and write the actual books, and mm -hmm. he's an older dude, so you know they want to close this out and start the fucking prequel. And like it wasn't necessarily the ending anybody was expecting or wanted. 
And and so that's why it gets so much fucking scrutiny because mm. you watched it all the way to this point to see this type of ending. And it you know what I'm saying? It's not yeah. the right. It's like one. The Sopranos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> it's a fucking. It's. It was okay. great up until that end. So. Uh, like I don't know what the fuck y'all said in those meetings that make y'all the little fucking think tank table think about that yeah, ending. But what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I, the whole, I, I, I listened to the whole explanation with the Sopranos, and it still didn't matter. On, it made no yeah, sense. Yeah, it still didn't what matter. What no. the fuck was that? Yeah. They gave me a, Just like, kill him. Except, yeah, Shoot exactly. him in the eye, bro. That's how was I right. fucking bouncing around? They, they, were, yeah, right. they wanted yeah, to leave it with saying. that yeah. mystique, but let you They're know. They're trying to do that all the time, because yeah. it's like, we want him to come back to life. He really didn't die. He lived over there. Yeah, it's like they try to leave it open-ended, but sometimes it's like... We need closure. Yeah, there's no closure. Yeah. I want to know what happened. Yeah. Still and, a great series, but you know what? The and, last couple series, uh, last couple seasons, really fell off, like four, four and five or whatever they were. Uh. For what? Yeah. You have to get, the you know, listen. You got to get, you, know. you got to get through the bumps in the road sometimes yeah, yeah. to get to to the good parts, and so, you know, sometimes Still they, a great they, they, they show. delivered on that. That was a great show, though. Yeah, ending suck, but great show. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I love that both the endings for Game of Thrones and Sopranos is like really kind of. It's, it's since it's such a like hot, interpretation shit. It's a hot topic for either fans right. of either show. You know what I mean? Because it's like some people are cool with it, some people aren't cool with it, and some people were like, "Oh, everything was great till well, that last episode." You well, know? for Game of Thrones again, HBO took it upon themselves to end. You know the way <clears throat> they did, and they went off the line of the book because. Homeboy hadn't finished the book. Mm, he couldn't wait. And, you know, who knew when he was going to be done with it because he's right. known for taking his sweet-ass time. Wow. And they got a series to roll out that's popular. Wow, what a trip. Because, I mean, Game of Thrones was everything on HBO for a minute, man. That shit was like... The, everybody I knew was watching. Everybody was yep, fucking with that. They were. Wow. Like The Sopranos. Yeah, they were. It was and, big. Yeah. How'd you like The Sopranos, the, the movie they just put out? I thought, oh, cool. the I thought it was cool. I thought the back story was cool. I enjoyed it. I it thought the back story was cool. I, I think, you know, that they're supposed to tell more of it. It was supposed to be our, what, Chris's father, right? Tony's for like, Uncle Junior, uh, yeah. Moltisanti's father, Chris Moltisanti's pops. That's what I heard it was about. Yeah, it's... Like it's, it's, and it's, them. it's yeah, it was about them. It's, yeah. yeah it's, I'd love to see. I'm it's who was influencing this dude at the time, but it's not basically based off of him. Mm. Specifically, oh. I think that's yeah. what people wanted or they thought was going to happen. But I, I like the fact that it kind of went even a little before that. They really set it up. You I know think what I mean? that's what's yeah. coming next, though, because there's still a story to tell. They're like, you still got to see sort of the in yeah, between. Oh, there's some more shit. And, they're, and they're, they're, supposedly they're, they're going to. Yeah, they could be set it off all over again. Yeah, I wasn't mad at it. At but all. I like what it was telling the story when, like, who was narrating the story from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The kid did pretty well too. Oh, as cool. as the young Tony. His yeah. his son did pretty well. It wasn't bad at all. I thought it was good. Yeah, homie was narrating the story from the grave. And then he was born later. When he was That's born dope. later, he didn't he was crying when Tony would hold him because Tony uh, had already murked him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was That's crazy. Wild. Yeah, That's that was that was the crazy part me up like, right there, right? Like he knew. It started in the cemetery and he was yeah. like, My uncle killed me. And then yeah. boom. Then he was when he was born later, he was fucking crying. Crazy. Boy. Yeah. Wow. Huh. <laughs> fucking crazy shit, man. Yeah. That, it, I, I wasn't mad at that. And if they did a series based off that, that would be dope. Which is, I think, what they're probably developing. Yeah, I think you're right. Like a wow. series. Yeah, if the Because there's so much enough. story there. Right. There's hella story, man. There's hella story, son. They, uh, yeah, it, it, people want to watch that shit. They could be cool and not even great. Everybody's going to watch that shit. Yeah. How about Boardwalk Empire? Any of you guys ever watched that? I watched that. That, that was, was good, too. That was a good one, man. I oh, like that shit. one. Buscemi did his yeah. thing on Hell that, yeah. mind. A lot of them did. I like that. I li just passed away. What's you name? don't hear Scar. about that era of gangsters a lot. So you know, like dope. the moustache motherfuckers. Dope. And you seen Al Capone. He was like yeah, 18, man. driving right. a truck. Yeah, he was right. like, oh, Absolutely. okay, this shit was hard. Prohibition. Oh, he was killing it. Yeah. And everybody was just locked in. with the fucking syphilis dick. <laughs> and then, you know, you saw how they were making a big deal about getting, you know, liquor in these Hell dry yeah, periods. Man. You know Hell what I mean? When Prohibition was a thing, they like they had to be liquor on the David low. David showed you the Joe Kennedy You know what I really like about yeah. these movies? Like, 
everything was there was like there was the big cities, but they were small towns still. Right? Yep. And it was yeah. very simplistic. And it was the yeah. cops and the bad guys and the politicians. And that was it. And you see how everybody's right. bought into each other and everybody's just all in each other's pockets. And you make so much sense out of it because it's yep. small. It's just this guy, this guy, and this guy. And that's just like how it is now. But like on that level, right? Like on like, whoa, you motherfuckers is like on some shit. <laughs> Word. Yeah. Did you hear the rumor that Sendog's brosha is a superhero at night? <laughs> Detaches from Sendog when he goes to sleep and goes out and solve crimes? <laughs> Battles with other iconic broshas? We've been finding a lot of, you We're know. We're finding a lot of findings. <laughs> findings right there. You should hear the stories, bro. Yeah. Uh, Sen's brosha is serious, man. Look at that. Falls asleep, it gets off, and it just starts, it leaves the house. It's a monster yeah. of its own. See, dog. Yeah, see. Oh shit. Sometimes it gets. I mean, that's light. That's, that's like that's, that's his tame. Like, that's his that's tame, tame brosha. Bro. That's so tame. Back to like '93. Yeah. Take it back. <laughs> he said, "Take it back. Take back that shit to Black back, Sunday yo. right now." Oh man. Dude, you, ain't gonna, you ain't gonna see his lips. <laughs> yeah. Untamed brosha. Didn't he say it stormed the beaches in Normandy? Somebody Storm, did. Brosha stormed the beaches in Normandy before yeah. Sendog was born. No? Yeah. Man, this participated in riots. His his Brosha was born before remember, he was. I remember when it was so big you didn't see his face. <laughs> there you go. There you go, see? see? Lipless. <laughs> there you go. That's a good one. Brosha. That's a brosha. About the one lip. <laughs> <laughs> Unilip. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> he said, "What?" Hey, lip? He's even tripping. He's like, "Where'd my lip go, <laughs> Holmes?" <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up. The brocha took up the upper lip. The brocha took over. This is our space now, dog. Your lip has to fucking stand in the back, eh? That's a feed me brocha, dog. Yeah, I mean, that you know, man, feed me. But I mean, there, there, are, there's a few people out there that have some iconic brochas. Like, look at that hair. No, my that. beard, my brocha was nothing, but the beard was, you know, definitely. Hair, man. Kenny Belly. Loggins, <laughs> Kenny Loggins beard with the fucking Jerry Garcia hair, dog. And that was like <laughs> Mexican Moses right there, dog. We was, we was on the road eight months a year back then. Yeah. Two wow. months, come home for a month. Six weeks, come home for a month. Wow. Six weeks, come home for a month. Six That's weeks, come work. home for a month. Yeah, we did. We were very, we were very rarely at home. We probably had two weeks at home and then back out on the road. You know what I'm saying? Say hello to the friends and family. Enjoy our bed for a couple <laughs> a nights. <That's laughs> what it. felt like a night. Be in the studio when you got home for two weeks every day, and then go back on the road. Fun yeah. times. Yeah. Tough Actually, got a better shot of the brocha here. There you there go. go. Wow, side See? angle. It's like, yep. Show the depth. The brocha took over the, the fucking girth. space, dog. It's like, you know what? This is our I show. I wish I knew the, had the other pictures to show you. You know the pictures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the documentary has fucking the brocha. <laughs> the brocha is in the documentary. <laughs> yep, the brocha. He's real. got his own part. Yo, I looked. I said, <laughs> holy shit. You know, some question whether the actual brocha did the rapping or send dog. <laughs> yeah, because Sendog actually cannot grow hair on his face. He's got that disease. But one day he woke up and this thing was right there. Was just kicking it back. <laughs> <laughs> he said, just kick back, dog. I got you. Like, Salute to don't the dog. Worry. They, made a, they made a partnership and here we are. <laughs> they made a partnership, yep. <laughs> yep. You got to give me some shine too, huh? Yeah. That's why he has a brush for the brocha. Yeah, right. That's why, you know, he's like, you got to keep me clean, man. Yeah, got to keep him clean, dog. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. Sam Elliott's brocha, dog. Sam Elliott got it packed with his dog. We'd yeah. never part. Yeah, forever. Together Sam, forever. Yeah, Sam Elliott got it forever. packed with his brocha. We never part. <laughs> Ever. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold up. We never part. <laughs> we never Is that part. closer? <laughs> that, was, that was good. That was we better? We never part. But, we never part. See, that's a good brocha right there. But yeah. to me, still. He's, he's had more he's brocha. Had way he's had thicker than that, man. He's had way more brocha than yeah, that, son. But to yeah. me, the fucking the twins from the Whispers, they're definitely the in twins. for oh, yeah. fucking brocha. Those are serious. Yeah. They're serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Serious. They, no, you're not wrong there. You know, they each sing lead. True that. Yeah, and the whispers. Yeah, each they're brush us. Yeah, they're they each sing, sing lead. lead. Yeah, yeah, they sing lead in that. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, yeah, man. Up there. I'll, I'll buy that. Look at that shit. Look at that. Look at that. Come on, man. Come on, man. Fucking brush. Brush. Just keep on loving me. 
love it, bitch. <laughs> I was going to do a fully on with you, man. You know, yeah. so they're looking, that's they're a looking, better one. That's Untamed Brosha right Damn. there by Sam <laughs> oh. The Untamed Wild West. You <laughs> the Wild West. You just got a chin. The Wild West. Brosha. Damn, the Brosha's fucking. <laughs> that is, yeah, that's some real shit right there. Yeah. My Brosha <laughs> is smuggle a half a key of coke into the country <laughs> under that shit. Yeah, yeah man. Put bricks in that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is clean. So we got to search top your part mustache. grow and then just only let the top part grow. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Keep going. That would be a waterfall over your mouth. Yeah. That would be oh, crazy. That's that Fu Manchu shit right there. You know yeah. what I mean? Damn. They be letting that shit just grow all the way down. No, yeah. on the sides. Look at that. <laughs> look, <laughs> look at that <laughs> shit. Look at that. Whoa. That's serious. That's See? fuck it. Yo. That's, that's, that's <laughs> that looks like a mullet on, <laughs> under his nose. That's, it's so thick, it's like a mullet under his <laughs> nose, dog. Look at that shit. It, uh, that's the <laughs> brush Man, partner. You can pick that out. You can brush it. You can do some things. I mean, that shit can use product. Yo, real talk, man. What, <laughs> yo. <laughs> Damn. Yo, one of my boys had like the hairiest fucking throat you ever seen. Like thick, thick. Damn, hairy throat. So we told him, yo, we'll give you fucking, <laughs> we'll at least give you $100 it's for two months. Inside his throat or outside? You shave everything on your face, but not your throat. <laughs> Hold me had a scarf. Yo, we, I got pictures. I'm going to get him and send him in. He had a straight wool scarf just straight across his neck. Funniest shit you ever seen, bro. Man. That shit was ridiculous. He can, he can hide hickeys <laughs> and shit ridiculous. like that. Ridiculous. Here's another good Moses pick. There you go. Yeah. Still yeah. not a big bro shot, but you know oh. the Kenny Loggins is running wild. This is it. This is it. No mistake where you are. Oh, uh, yeah. That was uh, that was when we played with Nirvana and... Um, and it live was supposed to be, it was supposed to be no Pearl Jam, but Eddie Vedder didn't show up. MTV shit. Yeah, yeah New Year's Eve. Yeah, I remember because I wore that that Sonics thing specifically for that because it was in Seattle. Because I am in no way a Super Sonics fan. Remember when Kurt Cobain was right there? And it was just right there. You didn't trip off that shit, right? Like, it wasn't like, damn, there's Kurt Cobain. I didn't know. I was just like, oh, those are the rocker dudes on the show. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't a We did a bunch of sweet, because we did a lot of things with them. And they yeah. was cool. We said, what's up, what's up? They was just like the little, like, little shy, little, like, emo rocker dudes. And cool as fuck. Yeah. Eddie Vedder, yeah. Eddie Vedder was cool as fuck. Yeah, he was, was cool. Was he? Good. Yeah, cool as fuck. No, he was cool with us. I mean, cool shit, I remember um, they actually called us to play the shit that they would put on every year. What was it called? Uh, yeah. Something in the park. Um, uh, in no, no, no. It was like in it was in Seattle, Seattle or Washington yeah. somewhere, and it was a festival they threw. That fool climbed on the scaffolding. Yeah, he climbed the on the scaffolding, and he was fucking swinging back and forth on it. And uh, yeah, there goes we're playing with with we're playing oh, with yeah, them that's right, the there. Shit right there. Because Eddie Vedder didn't show up. These dudes didn't get to play the Pearl Jam set, but they stuck around. To play the song that we did with them on on Judgment Night, the real the real, real thing, thing or real yeah real thing right yeah, yeah. yeah. um so that Stone Gusser right there on the guitar mm. and and that's the only time we performed yeah. that so. DJ Mugs and the Fly Fila. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck a shirt back I there. Should have seen my shoes, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Word yeah. That was a cool show. I didn't have yeah, my voice cool. together yet, but it, the energy was all there. Yeah, the crowds were the shit. Yeah. Motherfuckers was having fun. It was like, I don't couldn't understand, you know, because there was crowds like 20,000 motherfuckers with no barricades or nothing. And yeah. Go on. Motherfuckers wow. fall down. They grab you in those yeah. kind of shows. They don't yeah. let you. They don't let you. Yeah. They, yeah, don't they let weren't you stomping each other out. They don't back run then. and trip. Motherfuckers picked you up and they Word. helped you. That was Not part of the real. whole shit. They might elbow you in the forehead, but Word. they're going to pick you up after. Word. Yeah, they don't do the dirty shit people do these days. What was your favorite right. venue to play in New York back in the days? What was your favorite venue? You got one? No. No. It was Roselands. Roselands was oh, shit. Yeah. Roselands was, yeah, Roselands. Right. Roselands was yeah. the right. shit. Cause, I wasn't even thinking that. Because the energy was so dope, and it was, yeah, and it was a general and admission. It was big. It was yeah. a general admission venue, too. 
Like there's no seats in there. So there was 3,000 yeah. motherfuckers yeah. just That's right. in the pit would be like 1,500. Nuts. Yep. For sure. Because <laughs> the New York crowds were crazy. Yo. That was, that was my and, shit. And what hey, was crazy fun. about it is it's a combination of different different motherfuckers from New York and then yeah. tourists who happen to be there Word. when this shit is going down. So it's, yeah. it's that combination. And the tourists are the ones who win because they get the full-blown experience. Dude. Yeah. Did you, know you guys know Webster Hall? Yeah, we, we did, did it Webster once, yeah. once or twice. We did Webster Hall, Wetlands, 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 Wetlands yeah. fucking the, the building, Limelight, the building, at the building, yeah. Limelight, yeah. SOBs. We played the building oh. with the How Beastie Boys. Yeah, yeah, the tunnel, the, the tunnel. tunnel. Anything in the tunnel? No, nah, we just, we, we just would, we'd go to the club, but palladium. we never played there. The Palladium. There you go. Um, yeah. Those are classics. Um, what's the other one? It's uh, um, the ballroom. Uh, what's Bar- it called? It Hammer- 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 Hammerstein. 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 Hammerstein ballroom. ballroom. Irving Irving Plaza. Yeah. We did Terminal Five down Fuck there. Yeah. yeah, those are classics, um, man. And then the Nokia, Nokia Theater. Yeah, good old Nokia. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> it's like, a, it, it, that that yeah. shit got flipped to like three or four different names, names, but that that was the place we took over after Roselands got sold. How about the garden? You like the garden as a venue? We never played. You didn't the do the garden? garden? Never yeah. been. Surprised. Yeah. Surprised. Yeah. No, Yo, we never played the very garden. Very surprised. You guys were part of a me and Chalk's first ever New York experience because <clears throat> when we, me and Chalk had went out, we started doing radio and we flew out to our first convention of DJs and radio casts or whatever. And when we got into town, you guys were doing, the Soul Assassins tour was at the Hammerstein. Right. And that was, a, we got right off the plane. And Checked into our shit, through our shit, and we went right to that show. We like walked from like as soon as we what got to our show, we walked, and that was like our first night in New York ever. And we watched Funk Dubious, House of Pain. Ooh, oh, you, you guys, hey, you know what? You that caught shit us, was amazing. You caught what us at the point where everybody was flipping out everywhere, Yo. and New York was where it all set off from. So they were going nuts for our shit down there, like Hell the yeah. whole squad. Yeah, man. Like, when that tour hit there, like, no one had a bad show. It was, like, I never seen that before. Somebody always has a shit day in New York because they don't fly everything. Yo, first mosh pit. You know what I'm saying? But, like, that whole night, it was one of those nights. Yeah, it was the first time I ever saw a mosh pit at a hip-hop show. Oh, yeah. And it was repeated for every, you you know, know, for, like. That first was Onyx. You you guys had it cracking from, and it was all the whole floor. I'll Man, tell you. I seen it. Sorry. Go ahead. I, I seen it first with the Beasties. Yes. Oh, there you like go. At the yes. Palladium, that, when all the that, suicidal fools would come out, you'd be like, "Man, there's all these motherfucking hey, mugs. gangsters and suicidal fools would be wild in the fuck wild. out, like just fucking ready." That was go. our first taste of it. When yeah. when they asked us to open up in that one spot, what was it called uh, the Octagon Ballroom or some yeah, shit, yeah. or the Octagon Club or some shit like this? We played with with them that that gig. I don't think you were with them yet. Mm-mm. This was in New York, and we opened for them. And that's that's when it, like it was f- that we saw the first pieces of that. Yeah. Well, I got that was, video. Wow. Yeah, but I got the whole video. The that whole shit is yeah. nuts. What? That that yeah. hey, that show we was nuts because that. Shady shot it. We expected. Shot, uh, uh, yeah, Shady him. shot that. Shady Perez. He he uh, actually directed how I could just kill him man. Um, but that that night. Like, I expected to see all that crazy shit for the Beastie Boys. I mean, right. it was their fucking crowd. You know what I mean? It wasn't our crowd. We we are here to fill the slot, and, and they invited us on, right? When they started mosh pitting and stage diving to our shit right then and there, I was like, like what? this is yeah. us right here. We're going to have this right yeah. here. I think Send Dog dove in the fucking crowd for the first time. Yeah. This was like before Lollapalooza and all that shit. Wow. You know, this was like a promo show we did for the Beastie Boys. Dope. They knew we were kind of hot. That's, and- that's why. That's why they had uh, Cypress open up in that that tour with Rollins band. Yeah, I mean, based off of that of- show, oh, we got that, we got the Check Your Head tour. You know what that though? Check shit. this part out. We were gold. We was getting money, and then we went on that tour for five hundred dollars a night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we was like, what? <laughs> no, I remember, you know what? Yeah. Me and B was talking. We was like, let's go steal every one of them motherfuckers' fans, yo. Right. Let's go bang so fucking hard. Like, come on now, after us, fool. And then we got Bobo out of there. There was there was yeah. one time that I yeah. remember. We wouldn't have met you, dog. <laughs> yo, Word. that I remember. I was hanging the out. The sacrifice we made. I was hanging out in your dressing room, 
You, you had a shit dressing room. Yeah, and but you the was, Wii was good. Yes. There you <laughs> go. But you were complaining already. Say, man, look at this. Give us a dressing room, man. We're already like, I mean, I think you're... Because we got to that level already. already. You were already we, we, there. We got to the dressing room level by then. Right. And then we went backwards again. And then it's like, man, you're in this little <laughs> shit box and shit like that. So I remember you were complaining about that shit. I'm yeah. like, listen, like, oh, shit. Yeah, we were kind of getting sunned. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like if if that's if that's the, you know like the, if anything I could define it as is like we're sending you right now. You know, like our it's, shit. it's time for like the dressing rooms backstage, and then there's like two big rooms and a little room. The big band would take both two big rooms, and yeah. we get the little room. True but, that, but I mean, and that's any tour, not the little room, but the, like the, the little the big bathroom. You had wow. the box, and that's and that's any tour you go on yeah. if you're yeah. not the fucking headliner. They're gonna take up. Whatever they want to take up there, they're fucking headliner. But I'll tell you what, that made us more competitive and made us more hungry. And that's why we were giving it to them every night. It's every on those night. Shows. That's how you got the exposure. You yeah. wasn't getting it on the radio or the video like that. You went and got in front of people and just built that shit. That Soul Assassin's Beasties, uh, So What You Want remix was dope. I remember oh, when yeah. that came out. Yeah. Arsenio Hall. But I'll, I'll tell you yeah. what, remember? I'll tell you what about the Beasties, though. Like, they, they, Definitely pushed our line. They, they oh, like one hundred percent. They embraced. Definitely. They embraced us and gave us a look that no one else was really willing to give us, right. um, because people were afraid of us. Yeah, and they were like, Psh, "We're bringing these motherfuckers," and so and and it became a, a pretty cool relationship with them. And uh, fuck, man. And you know, it's like for me, it was like when I say I'm gonna go steal their fans every night. I mean, you like you took us with you, you embraced us, and you gave us access to your world. Right. So the fact that I got access to your world, I, we just got to go show what we do and be dope. And yeah. We're going to have new fans. Absolutely. You know I mean? So it's yeah. like, it's the same thing like b reposting a dude with like 500 followers and say, go check out my homie. His shit's dope. Right you know what I'm saying? And that's you ain't the, stealing fans. You're earning fans. That was, that fans was the at the time. That was, that, that was how you had yeah. to go do that shit. Yeah. You had to go out and there. You was, had to win yeah. them over. You, right. had to be, you better be dope because they're dope. You got to be extra crazy. good. It was crazy because, you know, Ad Rock and them guys would be like, you know, Wearing Cypress Hill shirts, yeah. Even before, oh yeah, they supported uh, for a, Cypress for a long came time. up on the tour. He was wearing, you know, Cypress shit, Mike D or you know, MCA, rest in peace and shit Hell like yeah. that. So it was like you were seeing that shit in the crowd too. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and and y'all wasn't even on it yet, and and then when y'all came on, it was like man, it was like boom. Yeah, that was that was one of the funnest tours. It, and it's like that too. You know when you're on a tour and you got the new bands, that's like your favorite new band. These, the motherfuckers coming up and they're on your tour. They get yeah. like that. They bring a new energy. Man, I was bugging the fuck out. Shit, I remember just seeing Cypress at uh, some some shit at Lincoln Heights in, in the park. Yeah. And then somebody got stabbed or some shit happened. You know, <laughs> shit always dead. happens. Yeah. I mean, Back in those times, boy, it was, all <laughs> day. It was crazy. <laughs> oh, dirt. oh, man. Things I can't, I will not talk about. But um, I, I do want to say this, man. I want to congratulate my man Burner. Uh, he got oh, married word. this weekend. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, um, yeah. Dope. Where was it at? You know? It was up in up in the bay. Uh, oh. Salute to him and wifey. You know what I'm saying? Uh, health, prosperity, yes. and happiness to y'all. Yes, yes. Um, man, salute. Word up. Big Bernando. You know, they, they, they did the nuptials, you know what I'm saying? Outside, look at that. Very beautiful, Damn. man. Oh, fucking nuptials. Very beautiful nuptials. They did the thing. You know what I'm saying? And he's back to work. You know that's, what I'm saying? That's, that's strong. He's man. like us. He's he like us in, in a down. real way. Let me tell you, my man works right there. He, he do works not hard. fuck around. Like in the right. studio, in the cannabis biz, you Every know, aspect, my dude right here, yeah. his work ethic is like very inspirational yes. dude right there, man. Yeah, it's so, that it's shit. He's a good human being right there. He's a good guy, yeah. That's a, my man Bernando right there. Big Bernzelli, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, congratulate him. Go on his shit and congratulate him. You don't even got to tag us, just congratulate him. You know what I'm saying? Show him that love. Wiz was up in there, you know, representing. Word. They did the thing, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, and if you're watching this show for the first time, this is Do Dr. Green Thumb show right here on YouTube and Twitch, Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time mm -hmm. on the start. Um, 
We're a little behind on this segment, but um, we're going to get into it right now because it's that time. Chuckle, then you Every keep on going. Time. It's like, come on, yo. Chuckles. <laughs> Chuckles don't Chuckles stop, son. Chuckles away. All right, let's run through them, son. We got submissions for days for the next couple days. <laughs> Great. Oh, we got Adolf in here saying happy, strong Friday on the past Friday. So okay. you watched the 420 episode at work. Yeah, oh, look at that. Man. That's like, beautiful. That looks like Yellowstone. Yeah, right. <laughs> they don't. You're not you're, wrong. You don't, better not hurt that ranch, buddy. Don't hurt. Don't touch that ranch. Don't you touch that ranch, Not bud. one inch. Don't you go near it. It's just beautiful. <laughs> and Adolf sent a yeah. picture of his dog. Oh, yes. All right. Hell Pitbull. yeah. Nice Love pit. him. Look at that face. He's sweet. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good boy. You got the nice little floppy ears. Good yeah. for you, man. Nice got the eye. Look at them eyes, though. Yep. He's just like, hug me. Yep. <laughs> just give me your hug, pal. He's like, really? We got to take another photo. <laughs> He's like, come on, dude. That's what it looked like to me. You got 80 of them. And we got we got AJ up in here saying he just got his mystery box. Yeah, All right, All right, AJ. It was in there. Thanks for the support, man. We got a lot of things in there. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and we got Austin in here. He's saying this is the best instrumental album. All right. Okay. Caribbean bites, cooking soul. All right. Nice shot, man. We'll have to look it up. Look it up. Yep. Instrumental album, he says. Yeah. All right. Okay. Bet. This was uh, Bart's barbecue last week. Oh, man. fuck Jesus. Man, he came through, man. Wow. Bart's. That he, he did come through. That is for sure. And Bart's saying we did miss the event, too. Mm. Damn. Oh, look at that. I had that. That shit was bomb. The burger? <laughs> Damn. The burger. <laughs> the one on the that. left. You had the fucking burger? The chili burger. The chili that burger. Shit looks good. Hamburguesa. Hamburguesa. Recommended. I would cut it in four pieces. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I need not. Nah, me, take... I'm a savage fuck. I'll I ain't have it doing all over that my shit. Face. I'll gonna, turn around. You're going to get your mouth oh, open now, White Sun. No, 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 not like that. <laughs> hey, no, if I don't mean like wow. that, I mean, Sensions. that's a lot to fucking bite. Yeah, yeah dude. You got to take it down. Top section. In section. Yeah, you got to put all that in your mouth, son. Nah, bro. Squish it. One bite. One bite. Don't do me like like Yo, <laughs> I fucking wasn't trying to this fuck right here. I'll do the other one without onions. <laughs> and this yeah. is what Bart sent in his Durr, room. Look at that. Yo. Motherfucking All right. Bart, Way to make me fucking immediately hungry He's right now, here, son. Too. Did he bring food? Oh, oh look at Ra Ra. He's looking at oh, it. Ra Ra. Ra Ra. Yeah, he missed. Yeah, he went. <laughs> he came up. He came up. Ra Ra, look. He came up, man. I was, I, was, I was upset that you guys didn't come through. Oh. He didn't even invite me. I wasn't that invited. That motherfucker, me neither. Yeah, I wasn't. No, I wasn't you invited. Know, I was probably close. I was probably like, you know, within fifteen minutes. And sometimes you win some, you lose some. Right. And we got this sent in from DJ the Lizard. This is probably my favorite submission. We got Telemundo's new announcer. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Oh, oh. people on show. Caso cerrado. <laughs> 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 That's fucking everything. You son. look like the president of some country <laughs> <Yeah>. on coke. <laughs> Lion. <laughs> In todo el mundo. Lion. <laughs> Saca la posita. Pantara. <laughs> 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 The uh, dictator Bobo. <laughs> dictator Bobo. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Edwin up in here saying thank you to Cypress Hill and crew for all the amazing music and memories. Word. Yes. I gotta say, um, the other day when we was doing the um shit with um the the meet and greet with Plant Galaxy and salute to Plant Galaxy. Thanks for having me there. Nice place. They got flavors. They're in Riverside. Check them out. Um, but on on the way back 
from there we were listening to Skull and Bones. And man, that's a fucking, that album was fucking popping. It was like in your face on both sides. Word. On the fucking, you know, hybrid hip hop rock shit. And on the hip hop shit, it was just bang, bang, bang in your fucking face. Damn. Yeah. Well, that's that's I was, interesting. I I, I, um, I was experiencing this this weekend. I hadn't heard it in a long time. We play songs from uh, it, but listening to the whole piece. I ain't heard it in twenty years. Bro. Oh man, yeah. you, the beats you did on that were fucking crazy, son. You already know, big bro. Yeah, I, I experienced oh, on wow. Saturday. Uh, Elephants on acid on uh, mushroom chocolates and some visuals. Oh, did nice. you? Nice. Oh, yeah, went, how was I that? Went, I so went there. Went did there. you understand? And you know what? Did I have to say, it? that shit was fucking perfect. I said, I said that motherfucker Muggs right there, he knew exactly what he was doing. You know I got what? it. You know you know who Ganja Sufi is, right? Yeah. I was like, hey, can you come write a hook for us? And he came in the studio and he went... Jesus was a stoner yeah. from Southern California. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. That's my boy right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, I, hey, that, yeah. and I had that shit going on with visuals in our house. So me and my girl were just like, there, that's checking that shit out. This shit was fucking perfect. Elephants mm. and Temples are our most psychedelic fucking albums. I put those back to back, too. But grimy psychedelic. Yeah. yeah, man. Then I went to uh, Stone Raiders. I listened to Stone Raiders too. I've been on Metrospective, man. This Me too. Like, the last couple of days I was listening to shit. Yeah. I was like, hmm. We was doing some shit. We was shit. doing some shit. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like early on, before motherfuckers caught on to it, like we were way ahead of it. But that's what we do. Next. This was Bobo the other day. Yep, that's yeah. Bobo. <laughs> on the mushrooms. That's Bobo on the mushroom tea right there, yeah. son. <laughs> oh, well, the funny shit was... Trying to get in the Lambobo mobile. Lambobo. No, the funny shit was, you know, going outside on the balcony right there and then looking up in the sky and seeing, like, there's spotlights, you know, and they're moving all kind of crazy <laughs> yeah. ways. And, and my girl is, like, saying, oh, my God. Aliens, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, is, yeah. what, I don't see the beam of light. I don't see it coming from the ground. Yeah. And then she's looking up, and then there's uh, the moon, but it's covered with the clouds. There's the hub. I'm like, oh <laughs> shit, <laughs> you're on a good one. They're right there. here. <laughs> oh my, <laughs> let's go investigate. That is a good one. <laughs> shit. And we just got a couple more submissions. We got Gilbert up in here saying it was an honor to meet Red and be real and the rest of y'all. Shout out to Aton for giving me a spare funky field tip as well. Broho, broho, Red Line Reserve. You're yeah. welcome. This was at Plant Galaxy. Salute, homie. I hope you, hope you enjoyed them flavors. And we got Glob Dropper 710 saying one of my favorite <laughs> Cypress Hill shows I've ever seen. Mm. Red Rock. It's hard. Yeah. It's always, you know, good doing shows with slightly stupid men. They're they're good dudes. It's a good vibe. Um, the crowd, you know, it's it's uh, it's pretty dope, man. We've we've done some stony shows with these bros. Red Rocks is always a good one too, cause I mean, it's Red Rocks. If you've never experienced a show there, um, oh, that's that you, big amphitheater yeah. looking one, like the one with should, the steps. That's right. You should steps. go to you should go to Denver, Colorado, yep. and enjoy a show there. Pick your favorite band when they play there, and go enjoy it. But get your cardio game up, cause if you gotta walk up them steps, baby, Word. it ain't nothing nice. I seen Trace almost pass out walking oh, up yeah. them shits. I'm a titan. I go up them steps, man. But for every show, I acclimate real quick. I'll yeah. go up them steps, breathe up there, so that I can get that the lungs ready for what's gonna happen <laughs> on stage. Cause huh. that shit ain't nothing nice. If you ain't got your cardio right, uh -uh. you better just stand still the whole show. Cause like Dead doing hip hop at at the pace we do it, like 100 BPM shit and above. Um, we got some slow songs to do the roller coaster ride, but like when you do the up tempo songs, you better get your cardio game popping, B. Dead ass. Yeah. 
Dead ass B. Next. And next in here, we got B Real sent in a submission saying, if you see this bag, get it. Yes. Hey, yeah. That's right. He's smoking it. Oh, heebie jeebie. <laughs> this is my stunt double right here, guys. Yep. If you see me take a fall, it's actually him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep. And that seems to be it for submissions. We want right. to thank everybody for their submissions. Keep them coming to Be Real TV Contest at gmail.com. We'll run them. Uh, when we got too many, we'll run them the next day. So, um, you know, keep in step with us, man. We appreciate y'all. We're about to open up the doors to the insane asylum. That means y'all um, ask a question, give a shout out, uh, make a comment, whatever you want. Right now through Super Chat, we, we uh, invite you all to this. Um, and once again, we urge you to hit that like button and subscribe if you are not already doing so. All right. Um, and hit that notification bell so you're up on game when we drop. Uh, open it up. Well, come on in. Let's do this. We got Midget Mike up in here saying hashtag GTM, and he's saying let's fucking go. That's yeah. right. GTM, that's right. All day, baby. That's right. And we got Jeffro up in here saying want to say salute to Mugs and Riggs. Riggs, new IP. You yeah. Really grimy up in New York shit, he's saying. Damn, thank you, brother. Hey, Riggs. Riggs had a dope part, dope parts in the in the documentary too he did right yeah he had some key pivotal shit to say it was dope salute to my man Riggs big up the Riggs my <laughs> yeah love that guy man he's a fucking good dude we took him yeah. on his like one on of his, his first, first tour, tour no right? his first tour his very first tour we made him one of us early on man, I, I tried to go take a piss and I walked in there and Riggs was up in there fucking some bitch <laughs> oh, close the door. <laughs> Went outside. Pardon me. Uh, Pardon me. Sorry, Pardon right. me. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Next. We got Zambi Gaming saying, "Sending you good start of the week vibes, and let's grind hard this week and feel it next Monday." Yep. What do you want to feel next Monday? <laughs> <laughs> working, working hard. Work, working yeah. hard now, but feel it next Monday? Yeah. Okay. You can't do it right now. Somebody's at the house. <laughs> <laughs> I want to feel it next Monday. All right. A lot of I just, work. Like, next I just Monday, want to be sure. Next man. Monday, everybody's going to be gone. <laughs> Putting in a lot of work. <laughs> and we got Twacklack up in here saying, what's Twack in mugs? Shout out to you. You're a legend, and I appreciate you. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate you too, brother. And we got Jeremy Burt up in here with the super sticker. Yeah. Word up. Thank you very much for that, Mike. Super sticker. And we got Sarah Dernfield up in here <laughs> saying, What's up to the whole crew? So excited Mugs is in the house. Gold is fire, and thank you for all you do and keeping the music alive. Thank you, you too. truly the GOAT. Oh, man, I appreciate that. Thank you very much for just the love and respect. Gold is the, the latest shit out right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, me and my boy Riggs from um, Rochester, New York. Rochester. Hooked up a few times this year, three, four times in the lab. I was like, you know, you got to come to the studio. I know you live in Rochester, but I don't, like, I don't do this email shit. That shit's weird, you know gotta what I mean? Got to come, come to the spot. Rochester's I talked to some too. people, and they's like, I never even, they did an album with some dude and never talked to him. They just text the whole shit. <laughs> That's, That's crazy. weird, That's crazy. bro. You don't like to do that. It's hard to connect. I try to, the new world's cool, but I'm still like, I like my shit. Like face to face shit is right. the number one shit. Agree. Right. And f then like FaceTime will be second, then the phone will be third. But don't the text and the email? That's like yeah. What time? I'll see you then. Okay, twelve. The restaurant on the street. That's like all oh, that shit's really for for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that shit's crazy. And we got T Perez up in here saying, "Yo, mugs, make it rough." That's right. And we got McLovin420 up in here saying, yo, DJ Muggs, you're a true legend, insane in the brain. Yes, sir. Gee, thank you. And we got Kiko from the South saying, only missing Send Dog, man. Hopefully one day we can have the whole hill on the show. Well, you know, some he said he would offer his brocha as a representative here <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when this happens, but he, you know, he didn't show up. <laughs> got caught up. And we got DJ DeLizard up here saying, shout out to the real Aquarius King. 
Bless you, Mugs. Full support and love from Argentina. Shout out Argentina, man. Thank you for the love and support, man. Cypress Hill forever. When's your birthday, Aquarius? When's your birthday, Mugs? 28th. I'm 25. I got a couple of days before Hello, you. Brother. Yeah, you go. Happy birthday. Yeah, thank you, man. You took too. money right there. Yeah, man. And the lizard saying a true inspiration for many of us. Thanks for all of your music and magic. Happy Monday week for everyone in the podcast. Right on. Thank you very much, man. Yeah, oh, yeah. Smoke. We got Zambi Gaming up in here saying work evenly as a team and know that effort is key. The effort you put in may not be what you get out of it, but over time it shows. Strive for your worth. True that. And then go fucking harder. Yep. Yeah. Don't rest on it. That, Cause that's the key to fucking falling off of it. Is it if you get complacent? Yeah, don't ever get comfortable, man. Keep yourself uncomfortable. Like, you know what I mean? That's why I'd be like, stay, stay a student. Just stay uncomfortable. And um, if you get too comfortable, it's a wrap. Yeah, you gotta, you know, even though you know you don't have to do certain shit, you still gotta do it to yeah. stay on game. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's that the ass, real dude. shit right there. Mm. Yeah. And we got Poseidon up in here saying Washington State 360 is in the chat. What up? What up? And we got my favorite in here, Karina Karina, saying, Hi, Mugs. I love Cypress Hill. I have no other words right now. Appreciate you and your dedication. Oh. Guess I did have more words. Well, thank you for your dedication, too, and Cypress Hill loves you back. And we got Victoria Pastouche up in here saying, Y'all have some great combos, and my favorite is when the subject is music. I don't have talent in that direction, but I've always loved it. Um, you know, you don't have to have the talent in it to appreciate it. Word up. It's it's like art. Mm -hmm. Not all of us can paint, but when we see something profound, you know, that hits us a certain way, we can all appreciate it. Yeah. Some appreciate Absolutely. it differently, but you know, that's it's like art. So you know, thank you. And we got American Girl up in here saying, hey, guys, you guys looked and sounded great on Friday. I was wondering what advice you have on copyrights with personal work and collaborations. And American Girl saying happy MLK Day. Yeah, happy yes. MLK Day. Shout out MLK. Um, what do you mean, copyrights as it relates to YouTube or something like that? Uh, she's saying <clears throat> advice on what you have for copyrights with personal work and collaborations. Yeah, I mean, you could send it in for copyright. That way it's always protected. That way if you do it um, and somebody recreates it, you're going to get yours from it. And we got DJ Ballistic up in here saying, Yo, Mugs, is there any chance you drop in for a mix show sesh with the crew? Oh, of course. We already got that planned. Oh, man. Oh, the yeah. last time you came and flipped over here, people were going nuts with that shit. Cause oh, we got to do it again. We they, you know, set like it up right there next time. People, you know, people huh. needed oh, yeah. to be reminded yeah. that you know, like what kind of fucking skill set on the turntables they were dealing with. And when you came with that fucking that set, boy, they were like, "Oh my god, that shit was fun." Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah, I was into the DJ shit at that point right there. Oh, yeah, you were Yeah, because you had uh, just come off a tour with, I think, um, was it? Well, it was like was some it? Elements it was, uh, tour or something. Cubert, was it Cubert or yeah, somebody? Yeah, probably Cubert or Mike. and Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you got to come off that shit with them them fucking aliens, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, you, like, like, you was hype. You was like, you get pumped mm. up. Yeah, yeah, you had been putting the hours back on the turntables at that point practicing. Yeah. And, you know, we happened to catch that. Because, you know, you were in that mode, and when you came and did that set, oh, man, motherfuckers was nuts. Yeah, that shit was fun as fuck. Yeah. We got to get it in, though. We'll put the turntables right there. Oh, yeah. We'll just stand up, put the mics on. Oh, we could do it. And um, get it cracking. Work. And we got DJ Ballistic back in here saying, Yo, B, did you ever get to pop it with Booyah Tribe? I mean, they were on stage with us, you know, here and there, because they always had our backs and shit. But, like, nah, we, we never did like that. Not that I recall, but I'll tell you what they they did like two of them did did something in uh, throw your set in the air, where they did a little routine for a half a second. You was on the one song right with 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 Booyah Eminem Eminem yep. yeah with the Rid, one, the Rid and Eminem yep. Um and I think who produced it was it Dre Eminem or Eminem produced <laughs> it yeah that one oh, was dope that was a cool one yeah. 
And we got Alex Beta in here saying, yo, Muggs, how was it to work with Jizza? And when is the next time you're going to work together? Oh, man, that was a dream come true to work with the Jizza. We had a good time. We played a lot of chess, drank a lot of Guinness Stouts, yeah. and made a lot of music. Nice. And, um, man, I'm, I'm hopefully, you know, one day we'll, we'll get back in the lab and play some more chess and drink some more Guinnesses and talk some more shit. There you go. And next up in here, we got Midget Mike saying, hey, yo, B. Yeah. You got that voice like Snoop. It always adds to make music fire. Love that you're still putting out gems and much respect. Well, thank you, man. Um, still more to go. You know what I'm saying? Um, enjoy the ride. We got Wasky Web in here saying, Sense Brosha is wanted for questioning by Interpol. <laughs> <laughs> by Interpol. For, for international crimes. International crimes. <laughs> Against humanity. <laughs> it's got about like five passports. Secret. <laughs> it's got a secret file. And we got 191601916 up in here saying, Be real. Looking like the singer from Los Spookies. Los Bookies. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Not really, though. In retrospect, like, if you want to make a correct statement, he's looking like me. There you go. Time in. Because this was way before. Just. Los Bookies. <laughs> yeah. And we got GDP Smoke up in here saying salute to the doctor. I'm about to blaze up some Puda breath. All right. Congrats on the show, 420. Shout out to Muggs. Temples of Boom is still my go-to Cypress album. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Temples of Boom is a favorite amongst the yep. Cypress Hill core base fans right there. It's a heavy record. It is heavy. And we got Midget Mike back in here saying, or he's actually telling us a joke. What job are dogs good at? What? Roofing. Oh, okay. man. Like this. Oh, yeah. that's a knee slapper. <laughs> oh, that was fucking terrible. It's in the super man. chat. That was terrible. <laughs> that fucked my whole day up. <laughs> Real talk, man. I'm upset. That was really bad, bro. Really bad. Fuck. God damn it. <laughs> And we got heavy hitters up in here saying, hey, yo, Muggs, any chance you'll ever bless our ears with some unreleased joints? Oh, from hell the vault? yeah. It's coming. Be on the lookout. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming oh, yeah. to a, a, a DSP near you. Boom. Word. And we got AJ Sense in here saying, hey, B, have you guys ever crossed paths with Bradley Noel, the OG singer of Subline? Those guys were ahead of their time for sure. I don't recall ever doing a show with them. Not not uh, not with Bradley. Not with Bradley. Yeah. Mm -mm. And we got J C G G saying C minus. Yo. It's John Charles chilling in the east side of Baco. Shout out to the Green Thumb Show. Oh, what up, John Charles? <laughs> John Charles from Baco. That's John right. John Charles. John Charles. The old J C. That's right. One of the one of the older homies in Vega. What up, John Charles? What's what cracking? What up? And we got Victoria Pastouche back in here saying, I never learned how to play any musical instruments, but I've been thinking since this past year that I want to learn how to DJ. Hmm. There are schools for it. Yeah, man. Beat Be Junkies. Beat Junkies got a school for that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Beat Junkies Institute of Sound. Look them up. And they do a great job instructing 100 folks on, you know, how it's properly done. And they make you appreciate that shit. Yep. We got Ya Ute up in here saying, was there for the 420 show, but my son woke up mid-show. Oops. Great vibes, as always, an awesome performance. Thank more you. life, more love, more blessings. Right on. Oh. Thank you. And we got Jonathan up in here saying, what's Muggs' impression on RLX? Oh, he's a, he's, he's a fucking dope little young lyricist, you know what I mean? Every time he makes another song, it gets better and better and better, so I'm looking forward to his future. And we got Anise Castro up in here saying mugs, sounds, and looks like Callie's older brother. <laughs> well, then yeah. he got lucky I did his voice in the novel. So yeah. <laughs> he got, he got right, man. Oh, yeah, I'll take it. And we got, let's see, we got Whammo up in here saying shout out to mugs. Everything you produce is absolute perfection. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that, man. And we got Jason up in here saying, God bless to the godfather of soul assassins. Yeah. Excellent. And we 
got Joanne Beachley up in here saying, I'd love to hear you do a score for a whole movie, Mugs. It'd be so good. Just need someone to write a good film, or you can write your own movie and oh, the score. It's coming out. Be on the lookout. There we go. This year. We already did it. The score's done already. The movie's coming out. The score. It's the fucking score, yo. We got Victoria's Pastouche back in here saying Pistouche. Cypress Hill equals legends. Much, much love to everyone. Well, thank you. And we got Irie Curls up in here saying, y'all looked neater than a Skeeter Peter on the 420 show. 421 show, y'all got the motherfucking black goat in here. That's some old That's school weird. shit. Damn. My mom still says that shit. Nice Boy, job, you man. look sharp as a Skeeter Peter. <laughs> wow. Right now. And we got Utah Hawk up in here saying, damn, back-to-back iconic shows. Thank you guys for kicking it with us. Hell Eat, yeah. motherfucker. One hundred. <laughs> and we got Midwest Boxing up in here saying Cypress Hill and One Hundred Piece Symphony Orchestra USA Tour, please. Mm. Mm. And that's a conversation Some we were having downstairs. Like how Damn. about that? That's crazy. Mm. <laughs> see how see how things happen. That Talk about it. Receptors. That was literally we were like talking about that shit the show. half hour before the yep. show. And it wasn't That's even wild. Rizzo. It was even he got it. Yeah, he got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rizzo didn't catch it. This guy got shit. it. Wild. <laughs> shit. Wild shit, my. That's Lord. amazing. We got Alex Beta asking, Am I writing the email address the good way? Be real TV contest, gmail.com. You got it right. Just put a at after contest and before the Gmail, and you'll get it. Boom. Send in the submission. All Thank right. You. There you go. <laughs> What he said. And we got Midget Mike up in here saying, Muggs, what's up with Lost Beats? Can we get B-Real on one? Ooh, I was oh, just yeah, asking about man. the Lost Beats, You know, we too. got so much shit. Me and B we already was listening to some shit, and um, we about to have some fun right yep. now. Yup. Yes. And we got Cisco2269 saying, B-Boy Nation taking over the globe. Y'all know for a fact you've inspired and B-Girls and B-Boys like myself to bust moves and power sets. Your thoughts on the Olympics, including break dancing? I think it's awesome to to, to see motherfucking b boys being able to flex in the Olympics because yeah. that yeah. is truly yeah. some physical shit like shit gymnastics. That's some shit. You know, what I mean, like you got gymnastics in there. This is it no is. less than that with Agreed. with what some of these guys are doing, and not for nothing. But my man right here, the black goat. Once upon a time, before he was on the turntables, was a beast. Yeah, I was. I, I, was I was agile. Ooh. I was like the Bruce Lee of the floor. Ooh. Yeah, get That's, out of my way. He ain't fucking around. That's real shit. Mm. I mean, I used to see the, the the old school tapes of my man getting down, and then once in a while, the ill shit would be on tour. On tour, when he so. would just bust out out of nowhere, yeah, out like nowhere, out of boredom. Bust into a fucking crazy ass move out of nowhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> out of nowhere. That shit was stupid. They were like, oh shit. Yeah, that was like kid shit. You know, you're like 15, you're having it's fun. Like, in the summer, you had the linoleum and you brought the linoleum and put it in the street. Or cardboard shit. Yeah, the cardboard. Shit. Taped cardboard. Up. Yeah. And you just fucking yep. yeah. break danced for all summer long. Rock steady, son. No, he had crazy aerials and all this crazy combo yeah. work. Oh, I mean, shit. Oh, man. Yeah. Shit, bugs do a B boy set. <laughs> I can only imagine if Aladdin was your roommate. I mean, you guys must have just twenty four seven been on like like just trying to fucking. This was before Aladdin. Wow! Oh, wow! Yeah, this is way before that. Whoa! Yeah. Nice. No, this is way back. Way those way kids, back. Bro. Back when yeah, kids, yeah, so some shit. Huh? They, they don't know. Damn. But they just heard a taste. Next. We got Markel Williams up in here saying, I have some merch going out to you guys, including the Cypress Gang. Right on. Thank you. We got Sarah Dernfield in here saying, Muggs, B was talking about how Ram LZ was a big influence on him and Cypress. Was that also the inspiration for the Ram LZ album you did? Um, n- not, not specifically, but just how Ram, what Ram LZ represented as an artist, you know what I mean? And, um, and as a musician, um, just tapping into that and his psychology that that's what the album was 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 pretty much you know um based off of we got j max c up in here saying respect for the 420 show can't remember the last time i slipped into a suit to just kick it at home salute to mugs and much love from toronto 
class. See, they slipped in the suits too. Dope. They did it with us. They See, that's it. awesome. That's cool. That's cool, man. Yeah. Cool. You know, maybe bring back the suit. We're going to bring it back. <laughs> we got Wask and you're saying Send Dogs Brocia is so OG that it wants to beep them instead of calling. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, Old sure. school communication by the brocha. Uh, I feel you. <laughs> and we got two questions for Mugs from Markel Williams. Mugs, do you smile? Oh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that was a smirk. All but. day. Yeah. Oh, shit. Well, that's a good Fucking one. mean Mugs. And Markel Williams is asking, what's your favorite NWA song? Oh, fuck the police. There you go. That is a good one. Fuck the police. That's the one. Hey, real quick, before we get into the next one, I, I, I told this story not long ago how we were doing a show. I can't remember if it was Dominguez Hills or something like this. And there was a bunch of sheriffs on the back fucking wall watching everything. And Pigs wasn't on the set list. But you looked up Put and it. saw them and you added Pigs <laughs> on the set list. Oh, last shit. minute fucking play. That was fucking crazy, bro. Called the oh, audible, shit. and but it gave the, the crowd an ex- life's about an audible. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it is <laughs> because guess what? That was a good call. Yeah, because the the it added to what people thought about us, right? So people are fucking <laughs> watching this show, and they more than anyone see and all those cool. cops back there, right. and we are not giving a fuck. We are playing this song, yeah. and wow. it just added to the vibe, like uh, on what we represented at that time which is we don't give a fuck and that that was the funniest shit ever man because i because i saw him for sure i looked back up there and i saw him and then the song came on i was like oh <laughs> here we let's go. go let's go Damn. it's time to go to work even though we were already working <laughs> next we got Javi G up in here saying, I went to Amsterdam in 97 and was super blazed in the Tattoo Museum, and they played Temples of Boom, and I knew everything was all right. Thank you, guys. Word. And we got Midget Mike saying, Cali Blaze, can I get the jar of dabs? Bless the small ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're coming out soon. I'll let you know where they're out. We can't be just handing shit out. You're trying to get me to lose my license? Shit. <laughs> yeah. Fuck out of here. And we got Yemi up in here saying, hey guys, congrats on Friday's episode. It was epic. Also, the panel's thought on Kanye going crazy for not being invited to daughter's birthday party. Oh, yeah. Apparently, he's done his diss track to. Yo, I just. Wifey Pedro and... just let me hear it. Yeah. Like, oh, shit. That's... <laughs> Talking about his kids and everything, eating oh, ramen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My man's mad emotional. You know Word. what I'm saying? Talking what about beating up Pete Davidson. <laughs> his kids are eating ramen. You can't listen. I'll you tell you this. this I'll tell you this, and I always say, you cannot work off emotions, man. Don't be making decisions when you're pissed off, because, like, you know, this is the shit you do, and it makes you look kind of bad. That's your kids, is. man. Oh, he, he bought the uh, house across the street. He, yeah, from, and he talked about like that. <laughs> shit now. Man, yeah. That's all some stalker shit. And right that's, some, that's some torturous shit, because, like, you know, if she's dating somebody, you see in that. Of course, he he's <laughs> watch him leaving the house every day, rubbing his balls. We're tucking his boxers in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, something, right? And it's uh, Pete right? fucking Davidson. That's got to hurt. The guy's funny, but he is fucking looks ridiculous. I mean, I don't understand. <laughs> he does. He looks fucking I don't, ridiculous. I don't know. Yeah. Black, he's, purple fucking eyes, like fucking heroin some, addict. Funny looking, but. He's got some dust right there that but just that has these women mesmerized. And he's fucking you snatching know what I mean? people's girls like it's nothing, man. Well, man, he's magic, son. Yeah, he does. I mean, magic. don't. You yeah. cannot question it. Nope. He's got some shit. Question. He got, he got some. game. Shake it back! All right, next. We got Cronzilla up in here saying props to you all. Nice to see mugs in the studio. That's right. Also, good set this morning. C minus. Kitchen, kitchen sink crew for life and oh. 5150s. Word up. Good looking out. Thank you for tuning in this morning. We got Midget Mike back in here saying, Ayo, hey, mugs, you still layer on the SP1200. No, I use Logic now. Only Logic. I pulled up all, a bunch of my sounds off the SP1200 and put them in Logic, though. Dope. Logic is the way. And we, get, and we got American Girl back in here saying, thanks, B. Mugs, you are awesome. And Graphic Novel was great, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. It's we fun had, reading that. We had fun doing it, yeah. yeah it was, it was fun. Super fun. And we got Heavy Hitters in here saying, Mugs' Dust Album is dope as fuck. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. True that. Oh, yeah. 
That is no lie. And we got Brandon G626, and you're saying, yo, Mugs, any plans of RLX Mugs Project soon? Yeah, we're going to do um, Crime Apple RLX and Mugs next, this year. Dope. So that should be fun. Looking forward to that. I got all the music on the side already, so we're ready to go. We got Wasky back in here saying, Bobo, can I get an eep for Mugs Ball Cap? Oh, shit, he got a bird. Oh, he's got a bird on his hand. Right. Right. Eep, motherfuckers. It's a three-legged crow. Eep. Three legged crow. Yeah. Google it. Eep. Google the three legged crow, motherfucker. Don't be scared. Eep, motherfuckers. And we got Jason up in here saying, hey, yo, Cyprus. Yo. Did Sendog do the ad libs on your albums or was it his bro show? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a good fucking question. We, we're, we question it. We don't know which. Because before he grew that brocha, he didn't have that voice. Yeah. Brocha, you know what? The brocha settled in <laughs> and the voice came. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a whole movie. The brocha. <laughs> the rise of. The telenovela. <laughs> the rise of. La brocha. La brocha. <laughs> Television. <laughs> Mini series. Telemundo. And we got sticky packs up in here. He's saying rough times, good vibes. Congrats on 420 episodes. Y'all is legends. Certified smokers badge. Let me tell you something, son. Hashtag faded and much love to everybody at the table. <laughs> All right. right Said a lot, All right. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, my. And we got Tribe of Gypsies up in here saying, I love hearing all the stories about making of music when Muggs is on. Thanks for another great show and much love. Party one, two, three. Party one, two, three. Party one, two, three. And thank you. And we got Irie Curls up in here saying, Big ups to Crime Apple. Yeah. Yep. Shout out Crime Apple. Oh, yeah. And that seems to be it, to be honest. Yeah. yeah well, all right. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, and the Insane Asylum and the Psych Award for your super chats. We appreciate you. And, uh, man, you're as much part of the show as we are. You guys actually do the interview part because Lord knows we don't do that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, and we want to thank Muggs for coming through. Man, thank you, fellas. I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, the yeah. impact, fellas. This shit is fun. Any, yep. Word any, up. Anytime. Um, and we appreciate you and your time for uh, being here with us on the Dr. Green Thumb Show. Newly dubbed. No longer the podcast, Dr. Green Thumb Show, just so That's you correct. know. Tell a friend. Let them know. Smoke out with us or whatever. All right. Um, Bobo, you got shout outs? Yes, sir. Uh, catch me on the socials on Twitter at Eric Bobo. On IG at Eric underscore Bobo. On Facebook, Eric Bobo Music. And also on Discord. Check me out on there. Empiresofficial.com. New music coming your way. Myself, Stu Bangers. New shit. Uh, and also new merch coming as well. And uh, also Team Icon. Thank y'all for y'all support. Much love to y'all. Peace. C minus. Uh, whatever, everyone. Thanks to everyone that joins me in the morning for the Twitch mixes on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Follow me over there at C minus fan for it. This morning I did rock. We did a thing for uh, for his girl's birthday, so we played a bunch of stuff he's drummed on and played on and all that stuff. So thank you to everyone. And tomorrow uh, we'll be in the mix. Me and myself and B Real will be doing a mix right after this podcast tomorrow. At, we'll be doing it at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. And go to djcminus.com. The whole new line just dropped. We got. Uh, we got a backpack, we got a bomber jacket, some shoes, got some hats and stuff, and then it's uh, it, pretty soon I'm going to be dropping some beats. I got some beats that I'm actually going to put out, and uh, yeah, it's going to be all through djcminus.com. So uh, yeah, just thank you everyone that's that's gotten anything off there, and thank you Mugs for coming through the show, and always, yeah. you know, dude, it's always a pleasure to hang with him and, and to learn from, you know, from the OGs, man, and I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Word. Bolton. 15% off today, Munchy Monday at Dr. Green Thumbs for all edibles. Check it out. Shout out to Ray, Morning Shop Films. Shout out to Pedro down there. And uh, shout out to Muggs for stopping through, man. Nice seeing you. This is my friend. He's got the Rachel to the stage. Boy, <laughs> got, you know that voice, right? Yeah, he's our be, guy. You could be at any strip club in the world and there's that voice. The we same say, voice. Yeah. Hey. 
We got, <laughs> yeah. we got, we had to have one. Any you know? strip club owners out there, hire me on the weekends. Let <laughs> yeah. me know. Mercedes to the stage. <laughs> we need delicious, <laughs> ladies delicious. and gentlemen. <laughs> That's shit. M- Mugs, you got shout outs? Oh, yeah, man. Shout out to all my family, all my supporters, man. I appreciate everybody, man. Thank you very much. Cali Blaze. Shout out to the whole GTM, my older brother Muggs over here. Yes, sir. Um, shout out to my girl, my family, everybody who's working hard to get the products out by the end of the month. Thank you guys for putting extra hours. I really appreciate it. And give me a follow on IG, Cali underscore Blaze, C I L I underscore B L A I S E. And I will see y'all motherfuckers Wednesday. Smoke. Smoke. Oh, assassin, man. bro. My man. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, make Smoke. sure you check out uh, those Dr. Green Thumb flavors um, called Insane at the Dr. Green Thumb dispensaries here in California. These are some of the bags. OG, Christmas lights, ice cream cake, maraschino, honeymoon, ruby red, Mac 11, Mamba juice, Godfather, Hindu funk. Great Bonsai, Bermuda, 41 Mint Zoology, Julia, OMG, Cali Nights, Cherry Bomb, Holland Space Cake, Cali Lights, Rainbow Mint, Showbiz, Kushido, Beat Me Up, Scotty. And there's some new shit. Stuff, uh, French Toast. Um, what's the other one? The uh, Alien, which one's that? Alien Brain. Yeah. Oh, my bad. Insane Alien Brain. Uh, that's one of the new ones you want to check for when you go to Dr. Green Thumbs. Uh, make sure you check out the flagship in Los Angeles, San Diego, and back open once again, Silmar. Make sure you go um, experience the experience at Dr. Green Thumbs, you know what I'm saying? And uh, follow us on Spotify and Apple Music to catch this on the replay, catch any of our shows on the replay. And uh, once again, we thank you for all your love and support. Um, stay with love. Love is the key. No boof, no fuckery. All right, stay on the one. Smoke that top shelf. We'll see you tomorrow. One.